Buenas tardes. Esta sesión va a ser en inglés. Si alguien no entiende inglés y quiere seguirla en español, puede pasar con nosotros a la izquierda de la sala para pasar por su receptor. Gracias. Thank you. Hey everybody, good evening, it's six o'clock. Please grab your seats if you're on the committee. And we will, we will get going. So I, John, are we gonna say something or? No, oh, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Um, Welcome everybody. Uh, this is our fourth and final um, Streets Bond Committee. We are going to start with um, some introductory remarks from one of the tri-chairs, uh, and then we'll also hear from Razi and Rod. Uh, after they make their presentations, they'll be very, very brief. As you saw on the agenda, most amount of the time is discussion between us. Um, after that, we will give an explanation about how the process and the motions will be handled moving forward. So we'll begin with some opening remarks, begin from hearing from Rod and Razi, and then Paula and I will talk about um, how the motions will be handled moving forward. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brandon Logan, and I'm a proud tri-chair for this year's 2022 Bond uh, Committee. Just wanted to say, on behalf of the tri-chairs, a huge thank you to you all. Uh, from volunteer to volunteer, we know that these last two months have been very intense. Um, a lot has been demanded of you. Uh, I'd like to think that this is an imperfect process that was presented by imperfect people, but we have a very perfect opportunity to do something significant. And as we're going through this deliberation process, I just want to remind you of our charge, which is to take the allocation of funds that city council has designated for this committee uh, and to really think through the themes of connectivity, equity, um, uh, resiliency. And at the end of the day, let's all keep in mind that we have to package, not just from this committee, but the broader bond of $1.2 billion, a package that will garner the support of our entire resident population. Uh, so as we're advocating for projects, of course, everyone comes from a specific district. Um, but let's keep in mind what the larger effort, effort is, which is to address the needs, the greatest needs uh, within this committee that we have an opportunity to start chipping away at. Also, I want to remind you, and then I'll take my seat, is that this is not the only source of funds. So there will be additional dollars that will be leveraged 
And so the projects that are below the line, it's very important that we have a very refined uh, set of priorities for city council uh, to consider because I, I believe in the environment in which we're in now, more state and federal sources will come down that we need to be able to quickly turn into projects and use those dollars in a way that's most meaningful for this city. So I just wanna say thank you on behalf of the triad chairs for your work. Uh, I believe that we are coming to the end of this part of the project, but there is a larger project uh, moving forward. So if we do have success with this project being, uh, this bond program being uh, successfully approved by the voters, I would love to see the same faces in the implementation phase. So don't consider this as the end, but consider this as a break uh, going into the new year. But again, thank you for your time. Uh, and let's have a great night of deliberation. Rosie. Good evening, co-chair and member of the committee. I'm Razi Hosseini, Director, City Engineering for Public Works Department. This is slide I'm showing, this is the same slide I present to City Council in August 2021 and 24th of August in preparation for our FY22 budget program. As you can see on this slide, since 2018 until 2022, we have spent, increased our spending on street maintenance program, or we call SMP. As we increase our budget, we have done also more F Street throughout our community. As you can see on this sketch, our PCI payment condition index was 72.8 in 2018, and we are anticipating to be 77.44 in 2023. When we present this one to council, council approved the way we distribute this money, half of the 110 million, which is 55 million, to be done based on the size of the council district network. And the other half was based on condition. Since our F Street is really a two years program, not really annual, it takes time to design utility coordination and building. Council decided in, in summer of this year, 20 million, which usually average we spend on F Street, to come from the bond, not from the general fund. Overall, F Street is not really a different program, just the funding source has been changed for 2023 when bond passes. And that will be distributed. If we follow the same process or procedure, 50% based on the size and another 50% based on the condition, as you can see here, I don't want to read those numbers. Council District 2, which has more F Street, they will get the maximum dollar from this 100 million we have for F Street, part of 2022 bond program. And Council District 9, which has fewer mile of F Street, they will get smaller dollar figure for their street program. Talking about the timeline, after tonight's meeting, we have three remaining meetings. Tomorrow will be parks, Wednesday will be drainage, and facility, which the last one will be on this Thursday. January 12th, the bond committee is going to provide recommendation to council. City council in February 10 will approve the list and also call for the bond and May of first Saturday in May, which is going to be May 7th, public vote on proposed bond. Rod is going to provide a few additional information regarding the bond. Rod. All right, thank you, Razi. And just to kind of reemphasize what Razi was talking about with the F streets, um, we, we pulled it out of our annual SMP because F streets are projects that take two years to do. Uh, otherwise, they, they would stay in the SMP, but it's just they take two years to do. We try to spend our SMP money within one year. 
and the S streets kept messing that up. So we kept on having to ask to carry that money forward, to carry that money forward. So we thought, why not put it in the bond, right? But that 20 million is still there. So council could decide that, you know, staff, I know it's convenient for you to do things this way, but we really want that 20 million to go into S streets as well. So we could end up with that. Uh, there's federal funds out there as well that uh, we are going to be applying for, uh, for infrastructure dollars that could very well be used for F streets. So that's a possibility for F streets. Uh, there's still ARPA discussion going on. So, you know, what I want to say is, you know, the bond process, as I said at the beginning, is not the answer for everything. Uh, it, it's, it's one of the funds that we use to further our city, but it's not the answer for everything. So there are still other dollars out there that we can tap into. So at the end of the day, your project doesn't make it above the line. There are still other opportunities for those projects. So, you know, my job is to tell you to stay within your budget. <laughs> so you have $477 million. Uh, that, that is the size of your bucket that council or that staff recommended. Council said, okay, go forward with that. So that's, that's your budget. So it's your job today to recommend projects within uh, that bucket. So uh, once again, if you want to add something at a project above the line, you have to find a project of equivalent dollars to remove or the dollars have to balance at the end of the day. So if it was something above the line, we need to move projects below the line. And like I said, from the very start, you know, once we draw that line, you know, we're, we're, we're out of money uh, because we do have, you know, the possibility for, for other funding uh, from federal dollars, ARPA, you know, Rosie's pretty good and his team's very good. So as we go forward with these projects, we may have some savings and, so, you know, here's some extra dollars. So we do want you to prioritize projects below the lines. We want you to tell council, you know, these are, these are our priorities. This is the projects that should make it in the bond. But should more dollars become available, we recommend you also uh, consider these projects as well. So we'd like for that to come out of today. So uh, that was my job. Stay within your budget, but also tell us your priorities after that. So that helps us going forward in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Uh, it's been a pleasure, you know, on behalf of the staff to work with you, and we look forward to the discussion tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Rod. <clears throat> so uh, that was staff's presentation. We um, just wanted to give you guys a couple of um, just not structure, but just guidance in case you still feel uh, a little bit unsure how to make a motion. So we will entertain motions. Uh, just make sure to state that you're making a motion, state your motion. You need a second. Um, we'll leave time for discussion um, and then we'll take a vote. When it comes to vote, we're gonna do, you have a green, yellow, and red card, green for yes, red for no, yellow to abstain. Um, if we see that the, call, the the vote is a little close, we'll do an individual roll call. But uh, John and Stephanie will take uh, tally and count votes. Um, uh, what else? Yeah. Do you have any questions regarding that? Was that kind of clear? Uh, another thing, you have a list of motions that were submitted. Just a reminder, these are not motions that ha that you have to still make a motion if you want to consider that. This is just so anything that happens in this meeting will be a motion. This is just um, recommendations or motions that uh, districts or committee members were thinking of making today. So a reminder, if you still want to make this motion, you have to make it in this meeting, get a second. Um, and yeah, John. So the way we'll begin, which I think is the most efficient way to do this, is we're going to begin to entertain a motion to pass a consent agenda, and then people will be able to take out items for individual consideration. So the goal of that is so we don't have to go through all 61 projects, because um, there's probably not, we probably don't have questions about all 61 projects. Um, but this way we will entertain, the, I will, we will entertain that motion for somebody to do that, and then people can take out items for individual consideration. Yeah. So there are a few motions proposed where it would change the language in every single 
uh, project, does that impact the consent agenda? Yeah, Dan, if, if I could, you're talking about like the, uh, the, the modes of transportation language, for instance. I, I think you could include that in your, your base motion. We can ask the attorneys to, basically there's some basic language at the very beginning around pedestrians and bicycles and uh, other modes of transportation that um, Dan's inquiring about. Yeah, I know that we have on other committees uh, contemplated an idea of having a separate communication sent to council which would contain uh, information that the committee deems is important for them to know, but maybe does not have to be part of the motion that is passed. Uh, really what we're, what we're looking to do as far as giving the council clear and concise recommendations and not diluting it with too much other information is to provide that list of projects, that amount of money that you've been allocated. But we are as staff, we're all, uh, we're all in favor of allowing for additional information to be provided through the city manager's office in a memo or other type of document. And I'll leave that up to the district that actually proposed it. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Marilyn. Uh, Marilyn Jowdy, uh, District 9 representative. I move that the 100 million F Street funding uh, that was formerly in the IMP or SMP? Actually, well, I, move, huh? I, no? um, I think what we're going to do is we'll pass the consent agenda and then we would pass the motion when we're doing items for individual consideration. Is that? I don't understand. Is a consent agenda, if I, we vote for, for the consent agenda, then that means we vote, we're voting for the projects or what? I guess Can, I don't understand. Yeah, no, sure. Um, so I could work to provide some clarity in, in broader. If you want to go ahead first, I can. Yeah, what I was going to say is th there are projects that everybody agrees to. So I think that's what they're saying is, you know, we recommend that we approve staff recommendation with the exception. And then we would identify those projects that we want to have more discussions on. So we could identify F streets. You'd identify those other projects. I know there's an amendment to reduce some of the projects. So we want to identify all of those so we could discuss those individually separately. And, and then we'd, what we would basically do is get, you know, 50 something projects off the table and we'd be focusing on, you know, these 10 projects. I guess, I don't know who's going to do the consent. Is, is the agenda, they're going to include everything and then we have to take out. So, so how for, can we vote for the consent agenda if we really want to take out something? Procedurally, let me kind of, Clarify. So very much like what you may have seen on a city council meeting, we do have a number of items that are on the consent agenda. Then council members are uh, allowed to pull items that they want to further discuss. So that's where we're at. That's the, the, I'm not sure we've gotten to that point yet. We want to get the uh, consent items on the table right now. That right now would consist of all the projects on the list. So in this case, Marilyn, you would pull the F Street item so that you can discuss and then eventually make a motion. Okay, so, and, and how does one pull, I guess? Yeah, it, it's basically just what you said. I'd like to, I motion to pull this item, whatever item it may be, get a second, and then we'll start making a list, having a list of the items that people have identified to be pulled off of a consent agenda. Uh, Mark, and then oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, just do, do we have a list of the sixty-seven? Do, am I missing that? Yeah. So it's in. Okay, got it. So, so, do you need a motion right now from one of the committee members? Yeah, I just yeah. want to say that any. I do, but any other questions about the process moving forward, Joe, and then Bob after. Now it is. The red light. Okay, hey, please use the mic. <laughs> the issues are going to be three D on at a time, right? So we focus multiple folks on. I don't know who is up, but from the chairs. Was it me or was it him? It was you, and then I think Bob, and then I think it's somebody over there, correct? Mark. Okay. Oh, you you yeah. did recognize me. Do I have the floor now? No, it's uh Joe. Sorry. Um Bob, then Mark. So we want to pull the uh F streets for a different reason. How does that work? I think you can pull the item and then we'll have discussion. And then okay. if you're ready to make a motion, we'll take a vote. And then if someone still has so, discussion. 
So they can pull it in, in through discussion. Right, okay. right. All right. Uh, can I, is I, it, can is I just it. emphasize one thing real quick? We're putting the motion on the floor to, for the consent, uh, consent items, but we're not voting on them yet. What's going to happen after we put the motion on the, floor, on the floor for the consent items is then motions to pull items off of that thing go next. Once we've got a list of the items that have been pulled, then a motion to approve those items that are on a consent agenda will go next. Those items will move on, and then we can have more opportunity to discuss those items that were pulled. Uh, we're, we're interested in maybe a one-minute uh, opening statement by each district, similar to what they did in the uh, housing. I think that that kind of puts a color to this process. I'm I'm okay with that. Is there a um, is that something we would actually vote on or? No, you could just do it. Yeah. Okay. The Okay, so uh, what you just heard is similar to what I was about to say, and that is that there will be plenty of time for us to specify what things we want to pull off of the consent agenda before we take a vote on what the consent agenda finally will be and approve it. Uh, so we get to talk about which things we want to change so that they're not consent agenda so that we'll have time for those. And then the things that are left that everybody agrees on, we'll be able to deal with them very quickly. So I make that motion that we approve the consent agenda as the consent agenda, which is the 61 project list that we received. It's dated November 5th. The total funding is $477 million. I make that motion. I second. I think it was just procedurally speaking, that motion is now on the floor. Now we can begin pulling items off of that list. And then I want to recognize Bob's point. We'll, we'll do all the what to be taken off, and then we'll do the um, district presentations. Does it need a second? It, it got it one, got sir. It. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Thank it you. got one. Yes. But to clarify again, those items that will remain on consent, um, if voted on for the consent, if we've got a language that would address those after the fact, how does that get incorporated? I think you would need to pull it out for individual consideration now. Well, if they're going to address all of the projects. Could we not amend the motion prior to accepting the consent agenda to include the language that touches all uh, proposals? Is that okay. not an option? Yeah. That wins for logic. Let's see if the lawyer agrees. Well, you know, yeah, generally, I don't know what comment you're talking about. So I, it's difficult to make the decision there. As I mentioned, if it's an overall general statement that you'd like to make, that could be made on a, a number of different uh, types of communication, either through a separate memo, cover memo on the, on the committee's recommendation. Um, until I understand what that, what that would be. It's, and, it's a little and, and if that's the case, then Mark would have to add it to his motion and still get a second. I do add that to my motion, uh, and I have a point of information. So we have a letter from the CEO of VIA uh, recommending that we do something, but I don't understand specifically what it's asking for. And so my question is, how do we do what the, v v the v VIA CEO is asking for? Thank you. I mean, I, I think the answer would be, um, I guess you would have to entertain a motion to I mean, the letter I think was probably more informational, not necessarily asking for a specific motion. Uh, just so we're all on the same page, communicating correctly, there was a via letter you all see um, that was submitted as public comment, um, and that somebody would need to take that information and produce it into a motion. Mark, am I getting to your to your question? Uh, yes, my my question is really directed toward. Uh public work staff as to what their recommendation would be as to how we can address those concerns. We're just, they're reviewing it now, so just hold on for a second. Um, the way I read it, or we read it, actually, we've been talking over here, it seems like they want something similar to the modal language that we're adding it's really just any projects that are being moved forward that they consider these bullets in there so i think it would be something that would be applied to all projects 
and I, um, I, I would follow up on that. Yes, I think the specific request would be that, um, well, there's two things that, three things actually, that the um, improvements are designed with transit consideration accommodations, um, that in the scoping process, all of these bulleted items are considered. And then lastly, that um, it does state that we're asking that the bond projects, which are ultimately included in the recommendation, um, include whether or not the project is listed in a current or future transportation corridor um, or the SA tomorrow plan. So those, because of the timing, would not be able to be identified at this time. So that might be able to be um, wrapped into the scoping language. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the most efficient way to do this. Is do we, um, would there be a motion in the beginning to, I mean, sort of tricky to, to be able to um, include this language in Mark's motion? So but do we have to really, do we have to have it all planned out now specifically what this language would say? Yeah, I think Mark's trying to talk. I don't know who's, yes. Who's so, that? if the staff would draft that um, that language and provide it to me, then I'll accept it as a friendly amendment to my motion. I'm I'm struggling with the timing a little bit because I want to. Um, if, how if long I, would it? Yeah, if I could offer. Please, sorry. yeah, please, John. If, um, instead of maybe making it a part of the motion, you could, as Ray was talking about, uh, the memo to the city manager and mayor and council that's. A, a, apart from the recommended list, you could make that language a part of it. I think as a recommendation, as a, as a something we got, we want to make sure you see um, if that helps. I think some of what's being proposed on the piece of language addresses some of that, but maybe not all of it, right? So. I think it, it does fully address it, but the specifics of the scoping could be done in a separate process. Okay. So, so I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Um, are we in agreement this would be dealt with in this sort of memo we're talking about? Okay. Yeah. Does anybody want to make any comments about that? That's fine by me. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Okay. So there's there's a motion at the table. Any items to be pulled for individual consideration? Joe. Sorry. Did, yeah. um, we would like to pull F Streets. Okay. We'd like to pull Floyd Curl, Hemisphere Park, Port San Antonio, Brooks, and Texas A&M. Any Here's other items? Memo. Sorry. F Streets, Floyd Curl, Hemisphere Park, Port San Antonio, Brooks, and Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. Any other items? We would like to make a motion sorry, to... Sorry, sorry. We would need a second on oh, what's I'm on the sorry. floor. I apologize for interrupting. I think Marilyn had a second, correct? I didn't... I didn't hear that. For, okay. Okay. Is just rhetorically, did you second or? Uh, yes, for the for the F Street. So. Okay. And there was no, no, two. There's a full list. There's a full not, list. It's not. It's it's being clear here. Yeah. Right. Sure. I'll, okay. So, it's F Street and Texas A and M. If there's there's a whole list. Of or somebody else can second too. I just wanted to clarify that. I'll second for the F Streets. Okay. There's a full list. I have, Linda, I have a question. Linda, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, in terms of the other roadways that were pulled, does that mean that we're pulling them from funding consideration or we're pulling them for discussion? For discussion. For discussion. Okay. Mark, go ahead. Thank you. It's my understanding that if one person wants to pull something, then it's not unanimous consent anymore, and so it shouldn't need a second. Uh, if it does need a second, I'm offering a second to every thing that somebody wants to pull to save time. Uh, but uh, District 5 would like to pull the South Zarzamora project, number 22. Uh, you're correct. And I think we just realized a more efficient way to do this, perhaps. We're just going to go district by district right now. And if anybody wants to pull something, that'll be the time to do it. So, District 1, any items to be pulled for individual consideration? Point of inquiry before we uh, pull anything. Projects that are not currently recommended would not need to be pulled by the consent from the consent agenda, correct? Then we have nothing to pull. D2. D3. D2. 
D4. Uh, nothing. D5. Just outside Zamora. Okay. D6. We have nothing to pull at this time. Thank you. D7. We have nothing to pull at this time. Thank you. D8. Nothing to pull. D9. Just the. Okay. And D10. We would like to pull item number 62 for discussion 1.5 to the arts. Okay, so on, there's a motion to approve the consent agenda. Excuse me? Yes. I don't have a number 62. What is that? The arts. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's the arts funding at 1.5%. Okay, that's my number 60. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, we would agree 60. Okay, so the items to be pulled are the F Streets, Floyd Coral, Hemisphere, Port SA, Brooks, Texas A&M, South Sarsamora, and the arts funding. Anything else? Say it one more time, just make sure everybody got there. Okay, one more time. F Street, Floyd Curl, Hemisphere, Port SA, Brooks, Texas A&M, South Sarsamora, and the arts funding. And I want to, I want to be clear, once we... Uh Pull these items for discussion. All the rest are going to go on a, on a vote to be approved as part of the consent. Okay. No more. Go ahead, Mark. Just a point of information. Um, so if we vote yes on the consent agenda, that means that we approve all of these things that we haven't pulled yet. Correct. Is that correct? Correct. correct? correct. So we need to make sure everybody's had a chance to pull things if they haven't done so already. And point of clarification, I think per Mark's uh, tweaked motion, we're approving with the language proposed by District 1, addressing mobility. Correct. correct? Great. Okay. Yeah. And just uh, for the record, I'm reading that language. Uh, added to Mark's consent agenda, motion to amend and standardize the language of all projects descriptions to include the following phrase, pedestrian, bike, and transit infrastructure as appropriate and in alignment with all current and future adopted transportation, bike, and transit plans. I would not concur with that. Part of a consent thing. I would pull that. Okay, so we'll, we'll pull that for additional You can, I, I, could that's you, a motion, could you, restate the motion? you can vote on that. It, there's, there's not clarity down here. Could you restate, I'm sorry, what the motion was? The motion is for the items in the agenda, the items on the consent agenda without F no. Street, Floyd Coral, Hemisphere, Port S.A., Brooks, Texas A&M, South Sarsamona, and the arts funding. Uh, and then the amended part, which is motion to amend and standardize the language of all projects descriptions to include the following phrase, pedestrian, bike, and transit infrastructure as appropriate and in alignment with all current and future adopted transportation bike and transit plans. That's it. Marilyn, I'm sorry, please. If we vote for it, that means we're voting for that extra language. How do we vote against the extra language? So, so we could handle the language separately if you like, if that's what you're asking for. I think that's what she's asking for, yeah. So let's do, we do that with, is that an additional item of consideration? So can I just recommend, as we were talking before, we can approve the project li list absent what we have here uh, South Star Zamora, F Street funding, uh, arts funding, Hemisphere, Floyd, Support SA, Texas A&M, and Brooks. All the other projects will be approved. What will still be discussed as an item to include in that will be the language that we just read. But if we want to move forward with the vote on the consent agenda, we can do that now. Yeah. Was that clear? Okay. Um, All I'm, those in favor? I'm a bit unclear. Okay. So Go the ahead, first Alex. motion was seconded or does it need a second? Yes, it was she, So as I heard her say aloud though, she, she reiterated, she said just F streets. She didn't say 
the additional projects on her second. So that's where I'm confused on what we're voting on. Okay. For, for clarification, because everybody's getting confused. For the streets to be pulled off by, I believe, District 2, she only talked about F streets. So to be clear, you are seconding for F streets as well as all the regional projects. If you are if you don't want the regional projects, you can't second for the F streets since it's a one mo excuse me, motion. Now, Mark did second for anything being pulled off. So there yeah. is a second for it, that. You don't need a second. Now, for Mark's original motion for the consent agenda, I seconded it without District 1's extra verbiage. That being said, all extra verbiage for any projects is going to be considered in an additional memo. That memo will be voted on separately under a second motion. So right now we're just doing a consent agenda for all projects that are not being pulled off without any extra verbiage. Correct. That's what we're going to vote on right now, just so everybody understands. Just projects. There will also be a memo probably coming after the discussion of F streets as well as the regional projects that will talk about additional verbiage, whether it be District 1, whether it be VIA, whether it be Joe Blow who proposes something. That will get voted on separately, and that will be a separate vote. So just so everybody's understanding, I know it's a little confusing. And I will ask to clarify one more time. I understood everything you said, but all the projects that we are voting on now for consent may have that additional verbiage added at a later time, correct? Thank you. Okay, so there's a motion on okay, the floor. If I could just clarify. Um, at the end in the blue, he had a motion that was seconded. There was a friendly amendment made, which he accepted as part of his original motion, which was to add the extra language. That's the motion on the floor right now. It hasn't been voted on. Even though there's another suggestion to do it without that language, his motion is still the motion on the floor. So if, if everyone thinks, you know, we don't want that extra verbiage, I'm gonna vote no, that's what you do. So that you can vote no to get to his motion, which is without it. So you can't make your motion until we've disposed of the main motion that's on the floor right now, which is his motion with the amended language. Yes. Perhaps I could make this easier by retracting my acceptance of that amendment as a friendly amendment so that we can discuss it and vote on it now. Okay. So then we move for a vote on just the consent agenda without the pulled items. Okay. All those in favor, raise your green flag. I mean, your green card. Point of information, what are we voting on? I was suggesting that we vote on that amendment of the of the language. So, so you're handling the consent agenda, then the language. This is the consent agenda. So. Thank you. Okay, motion passes. Unanimous, yep. Okay, so just a question. Would next be the F streets and regional projects or is next the motion or whoever proposes it for the verbiage? Just asking as a question. So it would be my recommendation to begin the discussion on those projects that were pulled. Um, and you can take those project by project and the chair can establish the procedure for those who will want to deliberate on it. And then after that, we can have the discussion uh, there's there's an opportunity to have a discussion on projects below the line, and there's also the opportunity to have the discussion on the language that should be included as well. Thank you. Okay, so now I'll do my streets. And, and actually, really quick, sir, before we start the conversation, I recognize um, Mr. Bishop's suggestion to do like kind of a little, each district can do a one minute sort of discussion or presentation. Um, I think we'll start that right now and do it. And so, say it again. Oh, he said three? Oh, I'm sorry. You said one, you said one, yeah, yeah, no. Um, so am I, am I putting you on the spot, District One, if I said <laughs> y'all are free? Okay, District One. Thanks everybody. David Bamparad, District One appointee. D District One's view of this process is that we have to act as if we are one city. We can't just be individual districts fighting over individual district dollars. And that's important and we should do it. Every motion that we have before us today, aside that, that we've recommended in advance of this meeting, does not cost any additional bond dollars. District 1 is not asking for any more money. We don't want it. 
we understand that we have a good part of downtown in our district and it's been the decade of downtown for a while and it's time we invest our neighborhoods and we are behind our neighborhoods and all of yours in that effort. Our motion to amend all language does not require that bike and transit infrastructure be placed in it. It opens up the possibility in line with what Public's work talked about on our tour. Our motion to send a memo on future uh, improve, uh, road, standard roadway improvement allocations does not change the current one. It looks into the future. We believe in public art and we believe in uh, supporting the, those organizations and those neighborhoods that came before us and asking for do bond dollars, but understand that there's not room in the bond for everything. That's where we stand. Thank you. Thank you. District 2. Joe Bravo, District 2. We pulled F Streets so that we could have the conversation. It's been an ongoing theme in this committee. Uh, it is so important to really take a, a hard look at those neighborhoods that have been historically neglected. Uh, we certainly are in, uh, in, interested in having that conversation since we're at 70, 70 miles of F streets uh, compared to the least of you guys that was six miles. And so I hope that we can have a candid, a good conversation. We support uh, percent by mile, uh, and but look forward to the conversation about that. In addition, we pull the regional projects and hemisphere uh, to have a conversation about those as well. They are looking to their future and we appreciate that, we support that, uh, but we're also looking what's right in front of us. And so as they, they gain momentum to be somewhere greater and better in the future, we still have streets and infrastructure that needs help right now. So that's the premise of our conversation tonight. Thank you. District 3. Um, Al Ariola. Okay, Alarila, um, District 3. Um, we actually didn't have any additional recommendations to what staff uh, was recommended. Um, we agreed by and large with a lot of their recommendations. We also applaud their um, brave and bold vision to include regional centers as it ties to what the community has brought, had what we brought the community to the table to plan for, which is our future. Uh, these are very bold projects. Um, the South Side has been underserved and underprivileged for a long, long time with investment. And as mentioned by city staff, I agree with this perspective too. Th these bond dollars have an opportunity to be very transformational for the future of the South Side District 3, uh, which is bigger than Seattle alone. Um, right now, funding dollars that are tied to the state or federal level are based on traffic counts and things that are just not uh, accessible currently to us, those pools of money. And so this, this investment infuses that, it makes it possible to make those traffic counts a reality to get further enhancement and investment from state and federal levels. <clears throat> um, hello, Andrew Salazar from District 4. Um, the, the main thing we just wanted to say is, you know, Looking at the regional projects specifically, we're very supportive of those. Um, those are, you know, two of them are in our district where one of them borders us in another district, but that really serves the entire city of San Antonio. I think especially when you look at those, the income that it generates for the city, for everybody in total in general, it's really been able to lift our district and the South Side community. Um, I, I think especially for F Streets, you know, <clears throat> if some districts want to add more funding for F Streets for their districts, I think they should really look at taking projects off of their proposed budgets. Um, I think this is something where you can either take some money off now and apply it now, or you look to future funding and you either come up with some type of verbiage for future funding to be allocated specifically. Um, I, I think that's just something that we all have to agree that what's been working in the past you know, works today and we've seen that with Rozzy and his team. Um, so I don't really believe that we should look to change that right now. I'm Mark Kamen in District 5, and my District 5 colleagues have authorized me to be their spokesperson, but I invite them, if I say anything that they don't agree with, to let it be known publicly by holding up their red card prominently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we in District 5 have uh, a lot of needs, but we recognize that there are a lot of needs in every council district, and we want the voters of every council district to approve the bond program so that District 5 gets money also. Um, the South Zarzamora project, we recognize that it's important that money has been spent on it already. And uh, what we want to do is reallocate some of that money for other needs within District 5, but we wanna keep it within our district. Thank you. 
Dan Roster, District 6. Uh, we look forward to productive discussions, both about F Streets and regional projects and individual projects. However, we cede our time and the support of getting to those discussions. Thank you. Don Rios, District 7. We are advocating for the project projects that, um, that we're supporting to address critical infrastructure needs, pedestrian safety, and neighborhood connectivity. Just for example, within District 7, a lot of our projects range from Woodlawn Lake area and neighborhoods all the way to 1604. So um, the package, of course, that we've assembled is very dynamic. And um, those concerns that I've just mentioned as far as connectivity, uh, mobility, and safety are paramount. Thank you. How are you doing? Uh, Mike Garza, District 8. I want to tell a really quick funny story. Uh, I was trying to explain to my eight-year-old son what I was doing here today, which is very difficult. Um, but when I try to make it in simple terms, uh, I told him it's like 10 different homes on a block, and we're all talking about what we should be doing with this bond program and, and future funding. Um, and he said, well, Dad, how do you know what someone else needs in their home? And I think that's what I want everyone here to remember today. We're here to represent our district and our community that in our area. Um, and we need to be respectful of each other's needs and, and what this bond program brings to the table. Um, I'm here to represent District A today, and I know it's very important to uh, us and my specific community. And uh, I want to re reiterate that every district is important. In our specific district, we have 5.25% of the entire bond program, which is the lowest out of any district. So we're going to fight for every single dollar that we have coming to us right now. Just FYI. But thanks. Mm -hmm. The, the concern is on the F streets is the shifting of the money that was already programmed in the IMP into the bond. And it's just a consideration that, hey, let's recommend to council, you keep that money, the F street money in the, bond, in the um, IMP general fund. Then we can, if that frees up the hundred million to do some of these projects that, uh, and I would itemize them that are on the below the line list type of a thing. So. Any other? And, and if I can just add, uh, Melissa Multimayor, District 9 as well. And so, you know, I also see the importance of the regional projects, you know, the the uh, Port of San Antonio, Texas A&M, Brooks, and Hemisphere. So just like to reiterate that. And then, you know, based on the, uh, the VIA comments, I do think it's important to include those design components that they're proposing. Um, on the projects that are that are being designed and being developed by the city of San Antonio. So um, if there is a way that we can incorporate those design components into the, the language of how these projects are developed, I think that would be beneficial. I think we need to think on a multimodal platform. Um, you know, San Antonio is all about, you know, people driving in, in vehicles um, as well as pedestrians. So uh, we need to, the bus, the buses as well. So um, would like to incorporate that language. Uh, Bob Bishop, District uh, 10. The city estimates that the need for streets, bridges, and sidewalks to be 2.4 billion. The failed streets total 458 miles, and the city's recommended street funding at 477 million, 40 percent of the bond package, which is wholly inadequate to remediate decades of infrastructure neglect. The 2017 bond allocated 52% to streets. Bifurcating the 2022 street bond allocation between major road projects and neighborhood streets, the allocation of the neighborhoods is an abysmal 30% or 360 million of the 1.2 billion. Taxpayers in each district deserve a better maintenance and improvements of pavements and sidewalks. By limiting the street funding to promote housing, linear trails, and for-profit venues, the City Council has unintentionally caused the districts in this committee to battle for scarce resources. District 10's motion seeks the greater good by recommending the street budget be increased by 200 million. Districts could use the additional allocations to fund F Street's maintenance and major projects. However, it would not rectify the considerable street neglect. Thank you for uh, allowing us each minute. Thank That's you, a good Bob. suggestion. Thank you. So we have eight items pulled for individual consideration. We'll start with F Streets. Uh, any questions, comments, discussions? Floor source. Uh, are you looking for a motion? 
discussion with, without the motion? Okay. Then you can do a motion oh. first and then, then discussion. If you're ready for the motion, motion. Yeah, I'm ready for the motion. Um, again, uh, to, uh, to to recommend to that we delete the, cut the hundred million for F Street funding with the recommendation to City Council. They put it back into the operations money, the twenty million per year. That frees up hundred million for us to be able to do things like um, District Two, the overpass at Ridman and Gibbs, District Five, the Claybor extension, District Ten, the Jones Maltzberger, District One, Jones Maltzberger, another forty million of a project of the other district's choice. So um, we would get more done. Okay, that was I can only make the motion. That was my motion. Yeah, if, if you uh, could enumerate the what you would add with this motion for us, just clearly so staff could could take a note. I'm sorry. Um, well, so, so go, go I understand the cut, but then the, the list of uh, recommendations, the blow the line projects. So it stands out that a lot of us, a lot of the members, committee members have recommended or asked about District Two's overpass at Ridman and Gibbs. That's thirty-five to forty-two million. Uh, District Five's Calabria extension. That's two million. District Ten Jones Maltzberger, uh, seventeen million. District One's Jones Maltzberger. Nine million. That's sixty-three million. Then I would leave to districts three, four, six, seven has a ten million dollar at Bandera Streets, and eight and nine to just pick something to add up to that forty million. <laughs> I, I, I think the motion needs to be complete, right? So, if, if there there needs to be a balance in the amounts that we're talking about. That's so right. if you're going million, to okay, hundred million from F Street goes into the four I said, and then the other uh, 47, 37 million divided up equal between three, four, six, seven, eight, and nine. There's a motion, do I have a second? You were in second, weren't you? Oh yeah, <laughs> second, sorry. Okay, discussion. So my, I have a quick question, if we are, theoretically giving back the 110 million to the IMP or whatever the acronym is, is that money, is there actually 110 million now that we have? Because it sounds like 110 million went from the city to us and now we're just going to give it back. So now there's not 110 million. 100, so 104, five, same thing. It just went from the city, 20 million per year to 100 million for five years in this bond package. And if what her motion is, is giving it back, we don't have that money anymore. So now we're, her, her, mm -hmm. Motion is in essence give back F Street funding and create a hundred million new dollars for projects. The twenty million per year was already budgeted, so that's already budgeted in there. Right. And what they were taking going to do is take advantage of the bond and decrease their hundred million out of their five year budget, and then do that twenty million each year for something else. So, so as I mentioned at the beginning, that twenty million is still there. And, you know, council has to have a discussion on how they're going to spend it every year. So if that motion was to pass, that money's still there and we'd have 110 million in our SMP program. And, and you would have 100 million to, to play with here. So I've, I've got a comment here. Uh, Dan Roster, District 6. I think this motion kind of flies in the face of what I think the majority of the conversation up to this point regarding F streets has been. Um, I suggest we just take it to a vote, given that I think we've got a significant portion that would vote against. Thank you. Okay. Any other discussion or comments, questions? Okay, seeing none. All those in favor, raise your green card. Or vote, I mean, do we? Do yeah, if we could all I think it's just simultaneously. Just vote, yeah. We'll yeah. call vote. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Motion fails. Did they get them? Yeah. We'll entertain another motion. Can I do a quick point of clarification? For regarding the um, all of the citywide or regional projects, is there logic in, should we discuss them all as one, or should we? Do them separately. I made the motion, so yeah. I'll speak yeah. to it. Please. The rationale for doing that is to, because of not having enough funding for F Streets, to move some money around. And each one of those, as I mentioned in the opening comments, 
they were setting themselves up for the future. And I think um, Al also said the same thing, that it's for their future and setting them up for, for what might happen uh, as they grow. And, and it's good for San Antonio as a whole. We agree with that. But what the problem is, is that the $20 million that has been in the general fund all those years has not caught up those disenfranchised neighborhoods. And if you go back to that, it's not, they're never going to catch up. So here's an opportunity to put some additional dollars into it. I would say the 20 needs to stay. Uh, I, I don't know who made the suggestion. I think it was the mayor's office suggested it goes to uh, Vision Zero. I think 20 million needs to stay in the, in the general fund and the bond money. So we're very far on our, our where we are on that because there's no way those neighborhoods are ever, ever going to catch up. And so is that's that, why we pulled it to have the discussion. Right. That's why we're looking at these regional projects and saying, can we possibly cap them or move Hemisphere? Hemisphere has not spent its 2017 bond money. It got $28 million, I believe. It has $18 million in parks. And it would be set up with the arc of project and timeline very well for 2027 for that project for $10 million. So it's not out of malice or it's not out of um, saying someone shouldn't have something. It's out of trying to strategically set the neighborhoods, the people that pay their taxes, the people that have sat there for 40 years and not gotten anything on their streets or sidewalks, trying to help them get ahead. And so that that's the premise of the conversation. We're not trying to uh, argue something. We're not trying to uh, belittle a project or diminish uh, its merit. We're trying to emphasize the need to catch up. And then just a reminder, we still have F streets. We need a motion on F street before we move on into the regional projects. Yeah. Mark and then um, David, and then I think Linda had her hand up. as well. Thank you. So I, I did want to make a motion regarding F streets, and that is that we fund the F streets as outlined on this memo dated uh, November 5th. Uh, as as the city staff have recommended for each district. Do we have a second? A second. Okay, we have a sec uh, motion and a second. Questions or discussion? Okay. I'm sorry, could that motion be repeated, please? Yes, thank you. So on this list of all 62 projects, it's really 61 projects because the Casa Bella extension has been removed. Uh, anyhow, uh, F Street's reconstruction is listed 10 times because there's an item for each district. So my motion is to approve that amount of funding for each district. Point of clarification. So the proposed formula is the one that accounts for both the road network size combined with uh, the quality of the road network per district, right? Co size correct. And condition, yes. Based on 50-50, as we have done through the budget process for the last few years. This is the slide. If you go 50-50, this will be for F Street, which Council District 2 will get maximum, which they have more mile of F Street and Council District 9 will get minimum, which they have less of if street. Can I? Yes. That's a good question, Rosie. Go ahead. Rosie, if, if we were to um, concur with th this funding here for the F Street funding as is, and that money were to be spent per district, what is the remaining, give me an example of say District 2 and District 9, because they were used earlier as the example, what is the remaining number of miles that would be um, categorized as F Street? We have in District 2 today 77 miles, and we have in District 9 is slightly under six miles. We usually do more of F Street on those council district, they have more if, if street. Even we have done more on last few years also, before even us putting part of 2022 bond. Of course, it took many years for us to get here, and it's going to take a few years to recover from having some of these if streets throughout our community. So if you used the 12, almost 12 million in District 2, you'd bring that 76 down to approximately how many miles? 
probably six miles or so. Bring down six miles, Correct. and then if you but use that's, that's annually multiply by that five, five it will be thirty miles. Okay. And the, conversely, in um, District Nine, I think you've got seven point four million. You would be left. That would also address about six miles. Is that what you're saying? Usually, it costs uh, two million per mile, roughly, depend on the condition of the F Street. So you'd be left with about two or three miles. Mm -hmm. So, Razi, just for clarity, okay. can you answer? I think the original question was how many lane miles of F streets would remain in districts two and nine after the funding were spent? Thank you. Yes, while they're looking, can we have discussion? Oh, we have a 68 today on Council District 1. After five years, that will reduce to 50, 62. You want all of those or just one count? Just two and nine is fine. Okay, two will be today 77, and if, after we spend this money, it will be 71. Okay. It will reduce by six miles. And District 9? District 9, today they have slightly under six miles. At the end of the five years program will be slightly over two miles. Okay, so at the end of this five years, you'd have 71 miles left of need in District 2 and two miles of need in District 9. Correct. If it was a static, provided nothing else gets worse. Okay, thank you very much. I think it's Mike and then Joe. Yeah, I, I think the, the term F streets um, should not have been used. I think what we're trying to do here is preserve our infrastructure. Um, F streets are the first thing you try to tackle, but any of that maintenance, any of those maintenance funds will be used not just for F. It'll be used for C, D, E, any other street that's eventually going to become an F. Um, the goal of the IMP for any city or any county or any state agency is to preserve your infrastructure. I think what's very important to remember is regardless of the number of streets in any of our districts, we have to remember that there's other criteria that I think should be considered and utilized, such as are you in the medical center? Are you around a major university? Uh, are there large traffic generators that warrant uh, something different than a cul-de-sac that has three people driving on it per day? We've talked about this before as a group. I want to make sure that we consider that. Um, we, I've, I mentioned this in a previous meeting, we here are not geotechnical experts. I happen to be an engineer, but not all of us here are engineers that can sit down and look at this with you know, an unbiased opinion. Um, we're here to represent our city, our, our, our communities, and I respect and appreciate what y'all are saying about the numbers, but we haven't done enough math and science ourselves in this committee to reallocate budgets when we have city staff and elected officials that do this on a daily basis. So I'm just asking that we respect the work that's been done up to this point and that we allow the city to spread these dollars as best as possible to be able to touch every one of our streets that are important to our, our communities. I think Mike has a good point. Since our budget is fixed, 110 million, the question is why not spend all of that F street? It sounds good, doesn't it? But before you know, C is going to be D, D is going to be F, and so far we are just going to be stuck on the taking care of F street. I think we'd rather to spend more money on the upper Make sure like a health. You don't want to get sick to go to hospital. You want to take care of yourself before you have to go to hospital. We want to make sure A doesn't come B, B doesn't come C, and C doesn't come D, and so on. Before you know, we are just doing F Street annually. Razi, is it true that you in your general fund are supposed to take care of A, B, C, and D streets so they don't become F streets? Correct. We so do. This isn't Maybe. about the general fund. The conversation is about the bond. But and, well, and I just want to echo Joe's comments here. I think before we confuse a lot of people, the funds here per the description of these projects for all 10 districts is allocated specifically to address fail rated streets. Those funds are earmarked only for those jobs. We've had a lot of discussions about how the language in these bond proposals is very important. Um, these projects are only to address fail-rated streets. 
The general operating budget allocates 90 million annually to address every other street in the city. Um, that's an important distinction here that is has been uh, incorrectly represented by one of my colleagues. So we need to we need to make sure we're all on the same page here. And just to finish my comment, that just because you have higher traffic or you have more businesses doesn't mean you're exempt from getting the right kind of care in front of your house. So it's important to have this conversation. You're about to vote on condition and size, which is what we've done historically, and we're never ever gonna get further along if we continue to do that. And I know it's very difficult to look at those numbers that we got for percent miles and see that there's money missing from your, your list. And that is why we wanna open the conversation about regional mm -hmm. centers so that we can move some money back into there. If we do that and we do it thoughtfully, we can be one, a half a street or one street off from what original was put in on size and condition. So I hope we have a substantive conversation about this and not simply um, write it off as they know better at the city. If they knew better, we wouldn't have 77 miles of failed streets. Joe, as you can see on this sketch for last few years, our SMP funding has been increased significantly and because of that, our PCI has improved significantly. In 2018, 72.8, and we are anticipating in 2023 to be 77.4. One of the reasons has improved because we have been doing F Street reconstruction. F Street PCI below 40. Anything below 40 is F Street. When you build those F Street, you increase those PCI to 100 suddenly are jumping by 60 point or more. That's the reason you see this improvement of our PCIs. Hi, Deborah Feeks, District 3. Um, I'm, I appreciate the, the slope of that line, but I'm just curious if you could give us a reference point to other major cities in the United States. Are we, is 77.44 a good number for large cities across the United States, or is that uh, uh, still a low number? It is a good number because, uh, unfortunately, we have within Loop 1604, we have very high clay. And also, good number of those projects in older part of town, done many years ago, city really didn't have a good standard for design and maybe not even good standard for inspection and other to make sure roadway is done properly. We have a lot of those roadway below PCI, of lower PCI. Our goal was an average PCI throughout the city to be 70. We have significantly passed that one again because of spending more money. Our, our money 20 years ago, state maintenance would be 11 million. Now we are doing 110 million. That's a really significant improvement. That's never is enough. We have to spend more money, but you have to realize how much more we have been spending in the last 20 years. Any other comments, discussion? Linda, go ahead. Hi, Linda Vela, District 6. I, I, I do believe that we could do a better job um, with our F Street funding, and I am very much in favor of it being more equitable. Um, I have real heartburn about taking funding away from our regional centers because those centers were envisioned through a, a very quantitative process by the city, also by the Alamo area MPO through a qualitative process. And the really interesting thing about it is that both the quantitative and the qualitative processes came to the same conclusion. And what's great about these regional centers is that they're places where people can live, work, play. So what does that mean? you reduce the demand on the overall transportation system when you can get people to live close to where they work. So it's, it's, it's like they serve different purposes. So how do we find the funding then? You know, can we maybe propose any bond savings, anything that's saved from all these other projects automatically goes to F streets and do something like that? Cause we've had savings on every bond that I remember. So maybe that's the motion but taking uh, funding away from those regional centers when they're actually serving a real purpose. It's not just about planning for their future. It's about creating these places where we can have density so that people aren't just spread out like this brawl that we've had in the past. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Andrew from District 4 again. 
Um, I, I think something that was interesting is, is you know, I, I got to talk to Rozzy on the on the bus tour that we had, you know, a couple of weeks ago. Thankfully, all District 4 was there. So we got to see a lot of projects in everybody's district, which was honestly amazing. Um, and something I found very interesting is how Rozzy mentioned that the budget has increased the past couple of years um, and how they use targeted funding to kind of relieve some issues. So I, I believe, Rozzy, and you can correct me, I think in 2018, there was a couple of districts who had a PCI score less than 70. Correct. And at that time, it was decided that any additional funding would be used to target those districts specifically to get them above 70 uh, score on the PCI. Is that around correct? That, that's correct. And and to date, all districts, all 10 districts have a PCI score greater than 70. And they're correct. not all 77.4, but they average to around 77.4. Average, correct. So I, I think something that would be worthwhile to think about, and while I probably won't make this recommendation, or motion, I guess I can say, is is looking at, you know, we in five years, there probably will be more money for, for F Street funding, or at least hopefully, I'll, I'll knock on wood now that there is. Um, and, and I think it should be thought about that we really try to look in targeting the percentage of F Street miles per district. Um, district 9 obviously has less F Street, or F Street miles for their entire district, for their entire network district, than District 2. I think we can all agree upon that. And I think, yes, we can all agree upon that we wish it was all equal. That being said, it might be looked at that any additional funding be targeted for any district that has perhaps 10%, 15% of F Street funding for their entire network. Once that's alleviated, all of that additional funding now just becomes the base model. So now every district rises with their base funding, but we don't look to change that base funding now. I, I think it can be very dangerous if we try to take that approach right now. As much as I always like to fix issues in front of me that I see, I, I have to balance that. And so I think it could be worthwhile of setting a target um, similar to how Razi and his staff did with the PCI scores, knowing additional funding can alleviate that. And when it becomes available, we can target that. The same thing for F streets. It might not be um, six F street miles in district nine and six F street miles in district two, but it could be, Hey, no district has more than 10% of their entire network of F streets and little by little we can target it that way. I, I think that's something very worthwhile looking at. It's not something that will happen overnight. Unfortunately, uh, hardly anything ever does. Uh, and so I, you know, that's kind of my take on it. I, I, I think it's tough. I think everybody has a valid point. Um, but I think it'd be foolish of us not to realize that, there, there is a discrepancy in F Street funding, and, and historically, there's a reason for it. Geographically, there's a reason for it. Um, that being said, you know, we can look to target that in the future, and as additional funds become available, we can really you know, fix that, and then everybody gets a piece of that money again. So that's just my little take on it, and using some of Razi's history I learned a couple of weeks ago. Suggestion. Why not? You are going to provide a number of the project flow line. Why not make F Street the first one? any funding available, and if you want to describe that funding to be distributed based on the existing center line mile of the council district will be the criteria to divide whatever the money becomes available, that probably will be a good, um, good uh, recommendation to mayor and council. Any other discussion? There's still an item, uh, motion on the table. Go ahead. So, um, Thank you for that, uh, District 4. If we had a crystal ball to know for sure that there's extra money in future bonds, that would be great. I think, I think what's discouraging is you see for District 2 almost 12 million, and then to tell us that it's only going to cover six miles, it's only going to fix six miles. I think that's, that's the point of contention here is it obviously needs more money. You're fixing six miles out of 70 in the next five years, that's a lot. So I think that's where the demand for more money to go to F streets. I mean, for us to wait to say that, well, if there's money left over, we'll address the F streets. I think this committee as a whole can agree that we want to ensure that there's enough money now for the next five, five years. So what's on the table now to move money around is out of, desperation. We can't wait until 2027 to then address 100 miles in District 2 of F Streets that will only get 12 miles fixed. Do you see? So it's just a snowball effect. So 
I think we need to address the issue now. We can't have a crystal ball and say, well, maybe there's more money coming. There might, but there might not be. So let's figure out how to get more money into F Streets tonight um, to make it equitable for everyone, for every district, so that the city council can pass it. So then it could be passed by the voters in May. Um, but I, I think that's what we need to figure out here tonight. And if, I don't know if we need to address the regional projects um, first and then take money or do we do the F streets and then move the regional projects, the extra money into F streets. We, I guess, I think we need some guidance for that. Yeah. So there's a motion on the floor with the second to accept this recommendation of funding for F streets. That's, that's what you should be centered on at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I, I have a quick question. Let's say for example, I was to pose some type of language, whoever was the original person to make this motion, they would have to accept that if we wanted to add some type of language or specificity to that, is that correct or no? Okay, so I would just like to amend that any additional funding from this point out be used to target F Street funding first. This would stay the same. Mark, would you like to add that to your motion? Yeah. Um, I. The reason I don't accept that as a friendly amendment is because I think we're going to need more deliberation on the other projects, but I like the suggestion. Uh, so I'm not accepting as a friendly amendment, and that means that we'll need to vote on that amendment. Sorry, I, think, I just want to make sure we have absolute clarity. So you're not offering that as an amendment. It was just an idea. I was, but then he turned it down. Okay. <laughs> you could uh, just I'm just trying to help you so if you wanted to make that amendment you could try and there could be a, a second from someone else and, and he doesn't have to accept it as a friend right so okay. that, that clear yes I will not not Four. the Grinch who kills every amendment <laughs> <laughs> can we make that that amendment are, are you offering an amendment sorry is that a question you can make it another yeah. We'd Motion like to make that amendment that additional dollars that are found are put against F streets, whatever way we need to word that. Uh, Joe, let's be specific about any funds that are found. What are you talking about? I heard uh, some people talk about um, savings, savings. Um, we had savings in the 2012 bond program. We, we have not had savings in 2017. So um, I, I think if you're going to do that, be specific about savings in the street proposition. Um, in the 2022 bond program, that'd be my so suggestion. Early on, I asked this question, and I think I got the answer, but I want to ask it again. If we are doing uh, F streets and we have, uh, let's say, $10 million and we have, or 9.5, and we can do $2 million each, and we have that $500,000 uh, that we can't do at F Street, Rozzy said it went, go, it went back into the general coffers. And no, then, it does not. No, it does not. No, but bond dollars do not go back into well, any into the general uh, category of bond. Yeah, it, it's right. got to it's for streets. It's got to stay within the general proposition, which in this case would be streets. Right, and then city council would decide where that extra money or that bumper money would go. That's correct. It's got to go to council for approval. So we could discuss and approve making the recommendation that council, if there is that kind of pot of money, go to F streets within the streets proposition. Yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, that, that's an example of being very specific in what you're trying to do, I think. Okay, uh, whatever I said, that's what. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, so it's any additional funds that may come out of any streets projects in the street proposition of the 22 bond program that, uh, that we, um, those dollars be prioritized by the council for F streets first. That's right. Thank okay. you. That's that's below the line, right, Rod? Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Here we go. Hello. Hi there, Matthew Biza, District 7. I also would like to mention that the City Council has the opportunity, if I'm correct, to change these funding amounts before they place it on the ballot. So in addition to this conversation, I would like to add, as a, I guess a friendly amendment, any additional dollars that City Council decides to put towards the streets sidewalks and bridges bond proposition as well so sorry back to joe i don't i didn't hear a second so i don't know if you can amend without a second i was gonna second 
This is a second. Now, now there's been a friendly amendment offered. There's a point of clarity here. Uh, also, Joe, are you making the recommendation that the formula that, that they use be based on the F Street network instead of the size and condition? Well, so I would have done it percent miles, but I think the motion on the floor right now is based on condition and size. Is your amendment for condition and size? I, I would prefer it to be, or we wanted it to be um, percent miles, but again, that's a tough conversation. That's why we brought up regional centers and other ways of refunding some of that money. But your language around any money left could be based on percent miles. So like his could stand. Yes. And then your amendment could be so, any money that's left yes. over. Is that, before, before we get any further, let me just mention, we're going to handle the, the amendments one at a time. Okay. Uh, with not more than, than two, like a friendly amendment to the amendment on the floor now. Because uh, we don't want to get into a situation where we're dealing with multiple amendments and not understanding. We also have the motion on the floor to approve as is with its second. So we will we can take the amendment if we're whenever we're done with the discussion, um, we can take a vote on the amendment. I'm confused then. So would it make sense then to um, have that discussion about what to do with any savings at the end of all discussion of all the projects? You know, I just mentioned to, to John here that, that that could be part of what the discussion will be on the language to add in addition to the project list with the uh, cost allocations, that was the, the fourth thing we talked about we would get done tonight. So we could, you know, we've approved a list of projects and their associated costs. We're discussing those items now, project by project, whether to add them to that list. At the end of that, we were gonna have a discussion about prioritizing projects that were below the line. And then after that, we were gonna discuss about providing communication to council some further direction in a separate document to the city manager, CCing city council, to give them more context to your recommendation. Okay, that was my concern that if we state that any money, any savings go toward S streets, that eliminates every other project below the line because there's no dollar amount, it's any savings. So it would be better to discuss all the projects before we make a motion. And the other thing I wanted to say was um, I would wanted to agree. I know I brought up the point about the F streets earlier, and it wasn't in the vein of let's fund more F streets to this bond project. But I think in our motion that you'll see later, um, we are suggesting that we make recommendations as to how to address it in the future. Um, I want to wholeheartedly agree with um, Linda and District 1 2 seven, eight, no, nine, eight, eight, <laughs> that um, our regional centers, which we've been planning for the last two, three, four, five years, and very, very thoroughly analyze as to how we as a city are going to connect ourselves um, in the future um, by mul multiple modes of transportation are extremely important. They are not projects that can be done in a bond cycle. They take a long time. These regional centers are going to um, take a very, very long time to build out. Um, and they're very important. And we have, as a city, stated that they are important. And I would not be in favor of taking any money from the regional centers to put forward toward F funding. And I'm one of um, in terms of equity, I see the I see the issue strongly, but I would not be in favor of, of pulling it from the regional centers. So there's there's been because we're having extensive discussion. Uh, maybe we should vote on the current amendment that's on the floor right now. And the amendment uh, and the motion, or just the amendment? Just the amendment first. If jo the amendment, amendment if the amendment passes, then we will go to the main motion as amended. Uh, and I'm sorry, I keep saying that, that the amendment was, it may have been over here where we got the motion to approve. If it fails, then we can go to the vote on the main motion. I rise to a point of order. Thank you. Uh, so I hear several people uh, saying that they are confused. And I want everyone to know, and I don't think it's been sufficiently pointed out yet, that if you are confused, if you have a question, you get the answer to that question before anything else happens. So you can interrupt if necessary and say point of information, and then your question gets answered. We're not trying to hoodwink anyone here, but uh, 
not everyone's equally versatile with Robert's Rules of Order. So if you're not sure what to say, tell us what you need. Linda, go ahead. Hi, Linda Villa, District 6. I, I would want to propose something different with this. I, I kind of would like to see it based on the percent of F streets with the caveat that we set a minimum because part of the heartburn is some districts are going to lose quite a bit of what's up there, right? Mine would be one of them. Let's set a minimum of 3%. Uh, my district would lose a percent, I believe. Another district would lose a percent. One district would gain a little. But you set a floor, and yet we can still keep everything within the total amount. But the other districts get their fair percent distribution. Just a thought. Okay, any other questions before there's action? I have a point of information. Um, so the current motion, or rather the amendment to the motion, is proposing... So all of the F Street funding outside of the line, right, it's separated on a per district basis. Are we proposing a single line item below the line that provides some percentage of surplus funding to all districts? Because it's notably very different from how funding for F Streets exists for the 10 existing line items there. So I just want clarity on how this would manifest. Joe. Sure. So I would recommend the percent miles for the, the, the additional dollars, and that would help shore up the, the, you know, the comments made by others about 77 miles and only getting six streets done uh, with that savings, as, as we described it with uh, Eric. Yes. Joe, would you mind repeating your amendment so that? It's clear. I'll try. I have a point I'll of try. I'll try. I, Joe, I have a point of information. Mm -hmm. I just, I just want to be clear. So, when we're moving these F streets below the line, does that mean that that takes priority for any surplus? So, does that mean that any projects that are below that will fall off? So, in other words, if there's some savings, it's going to go directly to F streets, whether it's uh, spread out evenly. But all of the projects that are below will then not get addressed. Could that be? Clarified, please. Well, that, that that's what we're asking. We're, you know, we're we're going to draw the line, and then we're asking you to rank in priority the projects below the line. So, if you rank this first, then yes, it would get. Was that your question? Yeah. So the question is: Is that are we the motion that we're making? Is that? Is the, or is that up for discussion? So are we making the F streets below the line of priority where everything else will fall off? Because we can cap it. So Joe, let's let's cap it. That's something that I think that we can all agree on. What What's number do you want to, are you willing to throw out there? <laughs> I think we need to look at the percent. Yeah. I wish we had the slide for the percent miles so we could see yeah. the difference. I think this is a friendly amendment and I don't think Joe's accepting. That's what I hear, is that right? No, I'm trying to get some more clarity. She's okay. trying to cap the, the savings from F streets if we had some savings on certain streets to go back. Um, we agree it should be a priority uh, at below the line, but capping it is the question that just came up. And I guess I need more information about what capping would mean. I think it's really hard to predict what the number of dollars that will be saved in, this pro in these projects are, right? So it's, it's very difficult for us to articulate what that number might be or not be. So, so do you, can we recommend possibly a percentage of whatever the savings is to go directly to F streets? And then, you know, my worry is just that the other projects below the line will not get addressed. And there are some very important projects uh, um, on there. So would you accept a percentage? And maybe, Ronzi, you can help us. Well, my understanding with, with Eric's help was that it would be in the F, cat F street category. I recommend to mention a million dollar from any saving from streets, bridges, and sidewalk to go F Street, either follow staff recommendation calculation or based on a mileage of F Street for each council this year, one or other. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? What were the two options? Option one is, let's say we, put, we ask $10 million if savings available either distribute that one based on 50% of the size of the network and 50% condition, what Steph is recommending. The second option 
is uh, divide that 10 million based on mileage of F street throughout the council district. In other words, any council district has more F street mile, they will get more of that $10 million. But just to be clear, the 10 million covers five miles, is that right, roughly? 10 five million miles covers of five miles, correct. So will that be five, one mile, half a mile per district, or let's say district, I think two had the majority of F Street, so would that five miles, I mean, so that we have to be clear, so let's say we go with the 10 million, is the five miles gonna go directly to F, to district two, which has the most? Not or? all of it, it will be divided based on the mileage. District two has more mileage, they will get more of that 10 million, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. Right, and it's coming from the savings in F Street category. Mm -hmm. So I think your concern is that it would be the savings from all projects, and that's not what Eric and I talked about. Let me make correction. Mm -hmm. Saving from F Street is going to be very unusual. Two million barely makes one mile. If you are counting on saving from F Street to do more F Street, that's just so it, it would be all savings it will from be all coming projects. Coming from other big projects. Okay. And it was uh, all projects, yeah. not just F Streets. Yeah, because F Street's going to be eaten up. And so your question about capping means that if it's a priority, then uh, no, none of the others would get the ten million dollars. It would all go into F Streets. And that's a concern. Yes. Joe, I understood your, your motion to be all streets, bridges, and sidewalks right. projects. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Okay. Not yeah. just I, I misunderstood you. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. So did, did you intend it? I'm sorry, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, no, you... I was trying to go off of your definition, so we're going with your definition. Yeah, the big the big proposition. <laughs> the big proposition, which with the 10 million, you guys were talking about cap. I think what Rosie's suggestion is the first $10 million of savings would go to F Street category. If we if we saved twelve million dollars in that proposition during the five year period, the first ten would go to F streets. The other two would go to whatever projects we take to council within streets, sidewalks, and bridges. I so think we're kind of I, a cap. I would, yes. So I would like to make a friendly amendment to cap it at uh, ten million. Rosie, we're going to hold you up to saving at least twenty. So we'll see you in five years. And by percent mile, right? I rise yes, to a point of order. Miles, yes. I was going to suggest it's it's. Hold on, y'all. It's seven thirty. We're on the first motion. I, I'd recommend Joe if you could please, or if somebody could repeat the uh, amendment we are voting order. on, and then we take a vote. Point of order. Oh, Mark. Mark. Um, so we're going a bit off the rails with friendly amendments. Here's the problem: if you offer an amendment. It usually it gets a second, then there's discussion, and then a vote. But if the person who made the motion accepts it as friendly, that expedites things because then you don't have to vote on the amendment separately. However, if you say, I offer a friendly amendment, you're telling the person who made the motion, please accept this. But it's really up to the committee to accept the amendment. And so don't offer a friendly amendment. The person who makes the motion accepts your amendment as friendly as a way of fast tracking this. But otherwise, if you're offering a friendly amendment, it just makes things confusing. Thank you. It does provide expediency, but as we had stated, we won't deal with more than, than one motion on the floor at a time. If we currently vote on the motion that this gentleman has and it fails, then we would probably go to the main motion that's on the floor unless there's, you know, you could introduce an amendment at the time after the failure of that amendment. Um, but asking for, asking for the friendly amendment, I think might provide additional support for, for it to go forward. Okay, if it's, this will be the last comment, then we gotta I, I, I appreciate it. I just wanted to give a little bit of a, a reality check, for lack of better words, or a consideration, a friendly consideration. Um, the, real quickly, when we talk about like half a mile, I know that doesn't seem lot, a lot of like a lot of mileage when it comes to a major thoroughfare. However, that does address the three house street, the uh, the dead end street, a location within a district that might need a lot of help but keeps getting overlooked. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you. So we have Joe's amendment and then Mark's motion. Um, can we repeat? Yeah, clarification. So, is it I'm Joe's sorry? amendment as okay. friendly amended with the uh, cap with center lines, right? And I think, uh, Eric, sorry, were you going to say well, something? I was just going to do the same thing just so that everybody's clear. Um, Joe, you accepted the friendly amendment? Yeah. Okay. For the record, could you just repeat your amendment as we prepare to get into a vote? So 
savings would be applied to F streets below the line as a priority. Uh, it would be capped at 10 million, right? Yes. Uh, any savings from any street, bridge, or sidewalk project within the streets proposition? But the calculation would not be size and condition. It would be percent mile. Point of clarification, percent center lane miles of F streets in a given district, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay, let's vote on Joe's amendment. Okay, please vote. Motion passes. Okay, motion passes. Now to the main motion. Yes, let's go back to my, Mark's amended. motion. Can you repeat your motion, Mark, just for the record? Yes, my motion is to approve for our street funding the numbers that are on the, on the screen as amended with the amendment being uh, that savings from any project would be applied uh, to F street funding based on center line miles uh, per district capped at $10 million total. Okay, let's vote. Motion passes. You got it? Okay. The pass. Okay, motion passes. As, as we move on to the um, citywide projects, there are representatives from citywide projects here. They're not being asked to give a presentation, but if there are points of clarity, points of information we need, they are here to answer those questions. Just letting people know that, okay? Oh, and also, I think since it's 7.30, we should consider time limit for the future discussions. For one, I think, each person is only allowed to speak twice to a project. Does that make sense? And um, we want to cap the, the time. Well, um, yeah, I think realistically, although we've tried extremely hard to end every meeting at eight o'clock, um, if I'm doing the math right now, that might be difficult. So I would like to, I would like to entertain a motion to extend the meeting time. To second, I so move. Well, we need a motion. I so move, noting that I I have to turn in grades tonight. I've got nine exams. I've got a grade tonight, <laughs> and I still want to stay here to get everything done. I I think you have consensus. Eight thirty, okay. you're saying, or nine? What are you saying? I mean, I, I think we'll. <laughs> I made the motion. I think. Oh yeah. And so I'm not going to set a time limit. All right, I want to get everything done. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve all regional projects as. He, he, oh, we got I'm sorry. a second. I thought I we, we expedited yeah. that. I think you can just extend the time of the meeting. You don't need to vote on it. If, if you all yeah. agree, it sounds like so. Okay. If that's okay. Yeah. Go ahead, okay. Andrew. I'd like to make a motion to approve all regional projects as determined on the November 5th, 2021 um, bond. Um, so, pretty much keeping all the regional project costs the same, or at least approving the funding as determined by the city staff. Second. Second. Is that clear enough? Yep. Discussion, questions? Oh. I think I think I saw Mark raise a hand and then Joe. I raised my hand a second, but somebody beat me to it. Okay. And Joe? Hey, can we have the conversation about Hemisphere Park? I just need more clarity. We had suggested moving it to 2027, and that was because we believe that it's going to get the $18 million from parks in this bond, and it's also received a lot of money in the last bond. Uh, it sets itself up very well for receiving the $10 million in the 2027 bond. And with the arc of timing of projects, it would be right on time for that. So I would like, go ahead. Yeah, I think so it's Joe, no. Joe, oh, sorry. <laughs> Joe, Civic Park is your correct, but the council on this Thursday going to approve contract for that project it will start construction in January of next year, shortly after council's proof. All right, well, I want to talk about Hayden Mr. Park when we get there. So I, I, I just want to be clear, I think we're there. I think yeah. you have a motion. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, there's yeah. now is the time to, if I understand the motion correctly, now is the time to discuss. Yeah. Okay, so, 
So I just want to have that conversation and how people feel about that. I, I know that um, everyone has argued very favorably about uh, regional projects and how important it is. Uh, we were looking just for additional dollars for F Streets, and we've gotten through that conversation. So um, Hemisphere Park is one that I really would want to talk about, as well as Brooks. Brooks did come back and say they had a, uh, a uh, TERS uh, that had less than $2 million, but I'm thinking we can move a million dollars if they go back to their TERS and get a million from them uh, to Ridham and Gibbs project. I met with them. Uh, they have done a study with TxDOT. Uh, they have all their stakeholders uh, on board. Uh, it is a long project, eight years out. Uh, and moving a million dollars for a detailed project would set them up for the uh, application for 2024's MPO. And so I would like to consider maybe Brooks or suggest Brooks goes to their tourists to get at least a million dollars. And we put that million dollars against the Gibb Ritterman project. Is, is there an amendment that you're offering to the main motion? Well, I want to, um, to move Hemisphere to 2027. And I want to um, see if we could reduce a million dollars out of Brooks since they have another opportunity for funds. It, do so I need? I, we need. Let me just let me clarify something. I don't. I don't think we can bind a future bond committee or a future council. So it's basically you're moving it off the bond. Which one? Well, you just said move something to the 2027 bond. We, we, we can't bind a future bond committee or future council. Oh, I'm just saying, I, basically, you're just taking it off. Okay, I agree. So there's no amendment to Andrew's recommendation, Joe? Say it again. Did, were you trying to make an amendment to yeah, Andrew's recommendation? Like, I would like them to make the amendment to consider the conversation about possibly taking Hemisphere off the bond. I, 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 maybe I could restate for you, Joe. I, I think you're motioning to remove Hemisphere Park from this bond. And, and to do that, you would remove it from um, group consideration of the regional center projects at this point. Correct. 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 OK, there would need to be a second for that amendment. There's still another motion, Andrew's motion, right? Yeah, that, that was to approve all regional, correct? That's the main motion. I don't see a second. Is the amendment okay, just the nine million or is the amendment also to move to decrease uh, Brooks by one million? I think I think we're splitting them out at this point for clarity's sake. Right. Sorry to interrupt. This is just on Hemisphere Park we're talking about right now. Sorry, Joe. I second Joe Bravo's amendment. Any discussion on Joe's amendment? Yeah, we, yeah, we can discuss and or vote. Joe, on your amendment, are you are you moving that nine million anywhere, or you're just what are you doing with the nine million? I was trying to move it to uh, F Streets, but we've had that conversation, so I'm open to that. I, I'm looking for a million dollars for Ritterman. So it could come from Hemisphere Park if we agree that that can wait. Uh, and then the $8 million we can open for a conversation. I think there are people that have things they want to fund. Joe, and I apologize. Um, <clears throat> and to the committee members, I, I'm going to propose something radical because I'm looking at it from the, the perspective of a, uh, a surgeon rather than just a, uh, a hunter out in the field. Um, no disrespect to the hunters out there. Surely we could excise, remove $1 million from Hemisphere. That would still leave more than enough there and then reallocate that money to the project you're proposing. If I, if I could, sorry. Right now the motion on the floor is to remove Hemisphere from the list. So that would be what is, de what, what is debated on rather than... Um, Kind of the other. He can't make a can, friendly amendment. Uh, yeah, he can make he can make either a friendly amendment or so. Just to be clear, for friendly amendments, even if it's not accepted, I know like earlier you had made a friendly amendment that wasn't. You can still make an amendment anyway. Um, there can be one amendment and then one amendment after that, and then Robert's rules limit limits it to that, and then we would vote on the amendment last, and then the other amendment, and then the main. So. 
just to be clear, and I think what, what the gentleman was saying, it doesn't have to be a friendly amendment. It does make it easier, makes things faster, but you can make an amendment on your own. But if, you, if that's what's happening, then yes, you can make an amendment. Otherwise, the debate is limited to, do we remove hemisphere from the project list rather than kind of um, outside of that? So I don't, I don't know how the temperature of the room is about hemisphere park, but I think uh, that would be a friendly amendment that I would accept given it would be earmarked for Riddiman. So so for clarity, you're, you're proposing not removal from, but reduction by 1 million, correct? Okay. Do we have a second? I second that. Deborah? I'd, I'd like to know the impact of that on the yeah. project yeah. before I vote. Yeah. Let me just talk about Richmond Road overpasses $35 million project. Million dollars going to give us only preliminary engineering, not the design, not the construction. Also, Hemisphere Park estimate is really $9 million for phase three. When you cut any dollar from that, we have to reduce the scope and perhaps the limit. We rather either you move the project or don't fund partially because this project is going to go construction in 2024. The way inflation is going to be in 2024-25 will be much, much expensive than today. I withdraw my second. Regarding the question about the one million, how it affects is. Yeah, Omar's <laughs> here. If, yeah, I was going to say, does Mr. Gonzalez want to? Yeah. Okay. Thank you all. Uh, I just wanted to clarify a few things. Um, so first, my name is Omar Gonzalez. I'm director of development at Hemisphere. Uh, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, the question about timing is that this is actually the third phase. So we started this project in the 2012 bond. And, and the issue is that every time you're not fully funded, you've got to go back. And so this project should have been done a long time ago. And every time we wait five more years. So to wait another five years um, would, would not make this possible. The other piece is we don't have a street. And so um, I know some of these projects are improving streets. We actually don't even have a street today uh, that is Hemisphere Boulevard. The third piece is that it connects to the east side. And so particularly for District 2, it serves as a meaningful connection, of which there are not many because of the barrier of 281 that existed prior to the World's Fair. So it's really a, a, a great way, and it'll be beautiful, it'll be shaded, it'll be pedestrian friendly, a great way to connect from the east side to San Antonio by making Montana a two-way street between Cherry Street and Hemisphere Boulevard. And then it allows us to build the park, to build new residential development, which includes workforce housing and for small business opportunities. And we've proven that this works with Hemisphere Boulevard phase one. We've done all of those um, in, in the above. Um, and then just wanted to echo uh, what Rosie said, that the Civic Park dollars is on council agenda for Thursday. Uh, we hope to get approval for Civic Park phase one. So this is all part of that master plan it was put together in 2012 with uh, with a ton of public input, and we're just executing on and continue to execute on it. So thank you, and I'm here if you have any other questions. Okay, John. Yeah, I just I just want to be clear. I think Joe lost his second; it was removed, and so I I, I think we're talking about a potential amendment with no second. Just want the room to know. I'll Do we second. have a second? You have a new second? Okay. Any other questions? Okay, let's vote on Joe's amendment. Clear, restate it. Amendment, Joe. Well, I'm confused too because I was trying to move money, and I think you can't move money from uh, one to another. And Rosy just told us that uh, if we take a million off, that it wouldn't be done at all. Correct. So, correct. Uh, your motion was to remove a million. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. it's just to remove, not move the million dollars. To remove that. Yeah. So it is to remove hemisphere, hemisphere. for. Okay, so just so we're clear, y'all, once just everybody put it down really quick. I know we just, just we're all on the same page. Um, this is to remove Hemisphere from consideration in the 2022 bond. Motion fails. Motion fails. Okay, we go back to Andrews, Correct. which is to approve all regional projects that we remove, we pull from it in consideration. Which includes Hemisphere Park. Which includes Hemisphere Park. Dan. 
There we go. Uh, Dan Roster, District 6. Um, so b before we vote, I just want to emphasize we got a letter delivered today. I think um, you've got a printout in front of you that spells out some of the impact that these regional centers have across the city. Um, and it's important to remember we have the opportunity to have an outsized impact with these dollars we spend at regional centers far more than we would gain from any one lane mile somewhere else. Um, these, these centers have been identified based on metrics that have been evaluated by the city, by the county, by other entities um, in order to drive economic development and other critical parts of our city's operation. Um, F streets are important. I've made no secret of that opinion throughout these discussions. So I'm sure you're all aware that I feel that way, but I also feel it, we would be doing a disservice to historically disenfranchised uh, communities and to communities that desperately need our investment now to drive further growth and innovation in the future. Um, that's all. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Paul, I have a question. Yeah, I, we are only voting on regional, not citywide projects right now. Right. right. We're voting on the list the was Hemisphere, Port S.A., Brooks, Texas A&M, and that's it. Yep. I think Floyd Carl is in the medical center. Is, which oh, is a regional sorry. Center. Floyd Carl is sorry. Well. Sorry to be that guy. Yes, thank you, John. <laughs> okay, ready for vote? Oh, go ahead, Christine. I was just going to make the point that all five <laughs> regional centers together are only 13% of this bond. Okay, if you'd all vote now, I think the chairs are looking for a vote. Okay, motion passes. Okay, next item is South Sor Zamora. I believe Mark pulled that item. Thank you. Uh, so District 5 is is making the motion. I'll, I'll make this motion on behalf of District 5 to reduce funding for the South Zarzamora Street overpass from 5 million to 2.5 million so that that would free up $2.5 million that we want to use within District 5, 2 million of that for sidewalks, and a half million for additional F Street funding within District 5. Is there a second? Second. 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 Thanks. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, Dan Roster, District 6. Um, can city staff provide clarity on the impact to the project that we're pulling funds from? Yeah, yes, we can. Zarzamar overpasses one of the 2017 bond funded 10 million. Also, we have 19.4 million from MPO due in 2024. Because of federal money involved, and we are going to buy significant number of property to build this overpass, anytime federal money involved, not just you have to buy their property, you also have to relocate them. We are anticipating to have a shortfall. That's the reason we are requesting this $5 million for to make sure project is in whole. When it comes to 2024, we can construct this project. Any other questions? Joe, go ahead. In your opening statements, Razi, you said that you were going to be applying for federal funds for this project and that that's a possibility. Is that still hold true? Yeah, we discussed this one with the councilwoman for District 5 also. If we do get the federal fund, when it comes to January, which the council is going to vote on this project, this entire package, she could move the money for other projects. But for time being, we recommend to be part of the project because we do not know we are going to get federal fund or not. So it has to be part of the package right now until you can, so you show matching or some due diligence on your side, and then at some later point you could move it if you were to be successful. Council could move in February when they're going to vote on the project list, correct. But it's safer to keep it where it is. Is that what you're That's recommending? That's a staff recommendation. Thank you. Go ahead, Mark. Okay, so I have a point of information because I made this motion uh, with the encouragement of our District 5 Councilwoman. So I'd like to ask whether she is present tonight. And if so, if she could uh, instruct us as to her wishes. If she could come to the, the platform, please. Thank you. If I could add to that, though, I also went to District 5 and, and listened to folks in our community, uh, heard from folks from 
both Lone Star neighborhood where I live, but also from South Cross and other places. And I think that if you hear from what we heard from in our district, which I know the councilwoman's also very attuned to, that this request is something that our community believes in and just wanted to make sure that that was clear yeah. as well. But I'll turn if it I, over if to- If I could, if we could maybe take a half second yeah. for a caucus here uh, with D5 and the councilwoman. And, and uh, if everyone has any additional questions, we could do that. But I think a caucus would be appropriate. Yeah, if, if I, I'd suggest we don't leave, Okay. but let's just take, why don't you all caucus and let, let's not do conversation while y'all are talking. 10-4, okay. okay, so there's no official business happening, so everyone's brain can take a break. Yeah. Maybe one more minute, if we could. Okay, we're good. So D5 is going to report out, it sounds like. Uh, if we could Please. come back to order, the chairs have the floor. Let's resume. Okay, so it is the opinion of our councilwoman that if defunding this project by $2.5 million delays the project, she is okay with that because of the great need for sidewalks, especially, and F Street funding, uh, pedestrian mobility within District 5. So your motion remains to reduce from 5 million to 2.5. Correct. And then you had a second, correct? Yes. Okay, any other questions? Okay, let's vote. Yeah. Is everybody voting? Is everybody that, those are some abstentions in yellow. There's abstentions, yeah, yeah, sure, but. Yep. Okay. Can you click, please? Can you keep, keep them up, up, please? We're counting still. Still counting, Stephanie? Yep, yeah. motion, motion passes. passes. Yeah. So, so that was the reduction. Now you need to make a motion to add the project that you want to add. I think. My motion was both. Okay. It was, yeah, I think it was My motion was both, and if there was confusion as to how uh, how people voted, should we should we oh, do, we got a, it. We got should we do a dish, an additional <laughs> vote on how to spend the money that we just saved? Was there any was confusion? confusion? Are we good? Yeah. We're good. Okay, yeah. moving on. Yes, okay. Last item, individual consider consideration was the arts funding was pulled by District 10. Any questions or comments? Or we'll entertain a motion. Sorry, I just took a bite of my cookie. So while we understand the importance of the arts in our city and the revenue it, it, it um, brings and the impact it has, we are saying that we cannot wait another five years to address the neglect of the cities of our city streets. There is an estimate of our population doubling by the year 2030 and 
In the 2017 bond, the arts was at 1%. We don't see a reason for it to increase uh, to 1.5, this bond going. They receive funds from the hot tax, the hotel occupancy tax. And there are other sources of, of um, streams of income that they can, uh, that are at their disposal. So we are suggesting that we keep it at 1%, which is where it was at 2017. That's our motion. Do we have a second? Second. So we have a motion and a second. <laughs> Questions? Dan, go ahead. Can city staff clarify how many dollars would be added to other projects with this proposed change, yeah, reallocating right half a percent? Today, one and a half percent is 7.2 million. When you reduce half percent, I think it will be probably 2.5 million or so. It's slightly under 2.5 million will be releasing from the public art. Matt, you had a question? The same one. <laughs> Mark, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to speak against the motion. Uh, this is a question of what our city is going to look like. And as things are constructed, we need for them to look pretty. We need a beautiful city. And uh, the art community is especially suffering uh, from the effects of COVID and loss of employment. If I can speak, there are many industries that we can all attest that are suffering for loss of income and um, financial reasons because of the uh, because of COVID. And I'm not I'm not saying that it's not worthy. I'm not saying that it's not um, needed. I think our city has gone has has uh, has moved leaps and bounds in that area. I'm just saying, let's move that two percent to streets. Let's stop neglecting our our city streets and let's uh, let's start. Um, addressing those issues for the next five years. And if, if I could. I'm gonna vote against this motion. Um, if I'm, for all the, the reasons you mentioned why we need public art um, and good public art and the reflection it has on our city, um, both nationally and internationally. And I believe this uh, line item started at 2% at council and it was knocked down to 1.5. Most major cities in the country have a 2% for public art. So we've been woefully behind for a long time and I will uh, very much support staying at 1.5. She answered my question. I just have a question about how how the public art is, to, who decides what public art is purchased and where it goes? Yeah, so I think that there are um, uh, projects per district from the bond uh, in this money, right? Um, there is community involvement from the arts department about what the shape and form of that art is, but it's not per, every street is not going to have a piece of art on it, right? So it's think regional art projects. Every district. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Dan, and then we'll go to Andrew. Thank you. Dan Roster, District 6. Um, so putting this purely in a dollar form, because that's what we're here today to discuss is, is the dollars and where they're going. Um, I think public art serves a really valuable financial benefit to the city. Uh, tourism dollars are a huge percentage of what comes into the city. Additionally, uh, companies trying to employ quality talent need a city that is attractive for people to live in. Um, you can boil this down simply to a financial decision and investment in art is an investment in the economic development and success of San Antonio. It's not just because it looks pretty. It really does serve a ROI towards our goals here today. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Andrew? Yeah, I, I think for the people, especially on the bus tour two weeks ago, Razi actually pointed out one of the projects from the previous bond that was an art project, which is actually Lackland Air Force Base. Um, there's a big spire there and it happens to be in District 4 as well. But that's just one of the examples of the art. And it it also made a bus terminal as well as um, like kind of a park area for on base that they can come off. You can also take your kids there. So there, there's uh, you, you may have seen a lot of this art. You just don't realize that it's from these bond programs. Um, but for example, that's one of them that many people on the bus tour got to see um, as we drove by it, you know, visiting different projects. So um, I, I do agree that I think the 1.5% is, is the correct amount. Um, I think if you did take it to 1%, you save 2.5 million, but 2.5 million divided by 10 districts is, you know, 250,000 roughly, or, you know, so depending on the math. So I, I, I really don't, I really don't see how that could be as effective 
Um, I, you know, I think we also gave 10 million extra, hopefully in savings to F street. So I think there will be additional money pumped into that, but I think at least in this form of the art, um, it doesn't make as much sense, um, when you're saving 2.5 divided by the 10 districts, David point of information on the motion. Is this, I, I don't, don't, I must've misheard you. Is this about, uh, to reapportion the 2.5 million dollars towards F streets equally among all 10 council districts, or is there any, uh, other project tied to this that we could compare it to? Well, we didn't, we didn't tie it to a project. I mean, that's open for discussion. It, uh, yeah, we would like it for F streets, but there was not an amendment to the motion. John, may I make some uh, c comment? Sure. Why one and a half percent? During this year, we had number of the council briefing. We had survey number of the city throughout the United States, similar to San Antonio. Good number of them, they had 2%. Some had one and a half, some had one. And staff recommend to council be one and a half percent and council accept one and a half percent. This is the reason we have one and a half percent for public art. So if I could make an amendment to the motion, um, and thank you, David, one of, the, one of the areas that was under much discussion between District 10 was after our uh, bus tour was Calebra Road. Calebra Road um, has um, the most need Right now, it has, from what our understanding, it's the street that has the most um, deaths, pedestrian deaths and car crashes, and it goes across, uh, goes through District 1, 5, and 7. Is that right? 1, 5, and 7. Um, so 6, I'm sorry, 1, 5, and 6? 7 and 6. One, all, five, of, seven, yeah, all of those districts. So if, if it does pass, we would like to, I'd like to make an amendment that that, that savings goes towards Calebra. Okay, we have a second to the amendment. Any other questions? Point of information. Uh, the person who made the motion also made the amendment, is that right? Yeah, I think she she's restating her, her right. motion. Right, so we don't, we don't need rather. to vote on these two things separately. Correct, right? they're, they're together. together. Correct, right. together, right. I would agree. So if we're ready to vote, let's call a vote. Yeah, sure, please put your hands down now. Yeah, I want to get you all to get some reps in, okay? Um, can we please restate So that? the motion um, at hand is to decrease arts Fine. from 1.5% to 1%, and the savings go towards Culebra, which goes across districts 1, 5, and 7. If, if I could do it individually, I could count if we're going to do that again. You want to do a roll call? Is that what you're saying, Chuck? Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. So by district, that would be helpful to me. I could not get it quicker. Okay. District 1. District two. Green and red. <laughs> District four, uh, three. District four. District five. District six. District seven. District 8, District 9, and District 10. What's the count? Oh, do we need us? Do we need us? Yeah, the the co-chairs, yeah. We read. The motion fails are 16 uh, and against 12, 4, and 2 abstention. Motion, motion fails. We still need a motion for the art. Go ahead. Uh, I'd like to make the motion to approve the 1.5% of art funding as per the November 7th or whichever date, the original. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, ready to vote. Go ahead. Please vote. Motion passes. Motion passes. Okay, I think those are all the items uh, for individual consideration.
Do we need to consider anything else, John? Are we good? There's a question here. Go ahead, Mark. Okay, so it's also part of our task to look at things that were not funded and to prioritize them. Correct. And I believe that we've put F Street funding from project savings at the top of the list. Correct. And I move to place in the second position on that list the Jones Maltzberger near 410, between 410 and Ramsey, $9 million. Second. Discussion, we're, questions? Yeah, trying so, to, so that would be now above Culebra Road, correctly? That's essentially what you're saying? That's right. Yeah, okay. and we are live editing on the screen so everyone can track with what's being motioned okay. so you can see it and visualize it. Just if, if that makes sense to everyone, just give us a half second. Is that clear for everyone so, on the screen? Uh, request for city staff, can we somehow notate what is currently being proposed versus what's already been voted on? So I know line item 63 there we've voted on. Uh, 64 has not yet been voted on. So Correct. Just, uh, only 63 is below the line at this point. It, it, based on this motion, 64 would be there, and those two would be the only ones at this point. Okay, sorry, wrong project. That's why we want to put this up here. Thank you. Okay, Jones, Maltzberger, Loop 410 to Ramsey. Did I get that right? $9 million. Council District 1. You hear that, Jessica? Okay. Loop 410 to Ramsey, $9 million. District 1. Eddie, do you have a question? Yeah, um, and I don't know if I can, like Eduardo Martinez, District 2, and I don't know if I can do this at this moment. I'd like to move to move the District 2 project uh, to number three or number two if possible, noting that District 2 is getting some of the least amount of infrastructure funding out of all the districts. And, you know, it's kind of counterintuitive since we have the most need. If, if I could offer, maybe we could rank this list and have one vote. I, I, I'm not a committee member, but it might be faster if that's okay, if we can find consensus that way. That's fine with me. Okay. So we move D2 project under, what is so we'll Joe accept the third to 65, right? Right. So we're accepting any suggestion. We'll do, we'll have one final list and we'll vote on that. Okay. Uh, I have a quick question. Um, projects not on this list are underfunded for, or unfunded for the 2022. The projects that we were given beforehand that are not within this bond, can we also include these, those on this list? Or is it just these that were given to us today in, in the emails? You can add what projects you want. Okay, so District 4 would like to add the Medina Base Road Five Palms to Home Road project on that on this list. Gotcha. So Medina Base Five Palms to to Home Road. Home Road and the amount twelve point two million. Twelve point two million. Did you catch that, Jessica? Row sixty six, sound right? Yep, okay. Oh, Joe, sorry. go ahead. Yeah, District 2 like to add Ritterman Road Gibson project for a million dollars. Thanks for your patience. Jessica's working on the fly here. Do you have a question, Jessica? Yeah, go, go ahead again, Joe, with it, please. Sorry. The next one down, Jessica. Medina Base Road was five palms to. Yes, Medina Base Road, five palms to Home Road for twelve point two million. Thank you. And then, Joe, can you repeat yours again? I'm sorry to do this to you. I think it's on the list. The Ritterman Road and Gibbs Sprawl. Okay, sixty-five is it? Okay, good. Okay. Christine and Mark. A question for Rosie. He's right here. It's a easy question. Um, do you have an idea on what the percentage of the last bond was in terms of savings? In 2007 bond, we had significant amount of saving. 2012, we had some 10%. In 2017 bond, on uh, Facility, we have zero saving, maybe even shortfall. 
because a good number of those materials coming from overseas. On roadway, we have some, but very small amount. Mark, I'm sorry. So we're looking at about $75 million with those four projects that are right below the line. Is that correct? That's correct. Mark? Uh, thank you. Uh, so I move to add to the list the Calabra Road sidewalks, but it's not I-10 to Callahan. This would be between Callahan and Alamo Downs Parkway, and the council district is entirely within District 6. Alamo Downs, not Alamo Dome, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll get there. And for two million, correct? Two million District Six, got it. We'll move that up. Oh yeah, um, David then Mike. Uh, I'd like to add as Project Sixty Eight uh, the North St. Mary Street sidewalks uh, construction of a six foot sidewalk in District One for four hundred thousand dollars. Yep, got it. Mike and then Bob. No, just a friendly suggestion. I thought District 2 had another project for a million that may have, I don't know if it didn't make the list or it's already up. Okay. And I, I just wanted to just be careful with the 42 million since from the way I understand it, we're going to tackle each one of these projects one at a time. If the funding becomes available, I would just obviously strategize there because that could take, I could stop all the additional funding at that point. So if there's low hanging fruit projects, maybe possibly a million dollars or less, maybe those, those are our top priority to get more bang for our buck. But just a suggestion. Bob and Marilyn? Uh, we would like to move jones Maltzberg or Redland to the top of the list. Most people may not be aware of it, but there are two schools. We have a junior high, and then we have a charter school of over 2,000 students. <clears throat> and the charter school, they have to pick up the kids. The road is so bad, it backs up the whole street. We really feel very strongly in District 10 that needs to be number one because of safety I, I hazards. Oh, sorry to interrupt. I believe you've already acted on what number one is, and that'll be the F streets. So just for clarity. Oh, sake, okay. But number uh, one below the line will be F streets at this point. Well, we'd like to be number 63. And number two in this number scenario. Two. Number two. To clarify, that would be 64, not 63, is what's being proposed. And Marilyn, you're next. I just want to let them, I don't want to confuse them with, so just hold on a quick second, but you all, you will be next. Hey, we're good. Okay. Government? My main is a question. My understanding of this list is, first of all, for extra savings, if they can work their way down, but it's also a shovel-ready type or almost shovel-ready type list if extra outside funding comes in. So I'm not too sure we have to worry about the dollars so much as we have to just worry about the priority of the projects because the dollars will take care of themselves. Is there, if there's like $5 million available, then they have to skip the $42 million and go to the next one. So that's just was if, – if my understanding of what this list is going to be used for, I think just the projects themselves is important because there's different kinds of money. Is that right? Roger, no, do you want to none of these projects is shovel ready. None of them. Well, there's no funding. But, but yes, there's, we, we, we would like for you to prioritize it, but you, you are correct. It's not just savings. I mean, there could be federal dollars that we apply for. It could be ARPA money. It could, you know, could be a number of ways that we would get dollars. So, uh, yes, you're right there, but we would like you to prioritize to help us uh, decide what what's a priority for this group. And, and these aren't restricted to being in the proposition because they're not in the proposition. They're so any proposition. kind of dollar monies can be used for that. That's right. what, okay. Any other suggestions, comments, questions? And so, John, I guess we vote on this. Yeah, if there's consensus, yes, you could I vote think on the Mayor list. Oh, I'm sorry, proposed. my fault. Sorry, so man. the only comment I'll make, I, I don't personally have an objection to the order, but I think the order right now just represents the order that people proposed projects right. for the most part. Do we want to have a discussion on weighting of these different line items before going to a vote? 
It would be appropriate, yes. To add, um, District 9, remember that first meeting where um, Evans Road to 1604 and it was pulled to do something else? Can we do that one? We can be in the bottom, just as long as it's on the list. Yeah, we work with Councilman uh, for District 9. Right. We reduced Evan Road. It still is part of the bond. And we create additional drainage project using the money we reduced from Evans Road. It did not affect any other council distribution. Right. But, I mean, as far as an additional project, he cut back that project. Sure. You, you so could that add it. Absolutely. Yeah, to make a hold, and it can be on the bottom of the list. It's just to, so we don't doesn't get forgotten, if you don't mind. The amount, sorry, I don't remember the. Do you remember the amount? Um, I'd really like to see that uh, Radom and uh, Gibbs project move up to number two. Once again, I'll I'll keep mentioning the fact that District Two is getting the least amount of infrastructure funding. We've had a lot of people speak on this project, so I think it would make sense for it to be number two. I know it's a large ticket item, but it's also a very important project. Whoops. Uh, 10.65 million was reduced from that Evans Road project. So if- Six and a half million, okay. Uh, whatever it. it was, uh, whatever y'all figure out it to be. My looking at it here, reduced amount says 10.6 million. Ah. Right. Ten. I apologize. That, that's Mark and then I have a comment. Mark and then Joe, sir. Thank you. Um, I would like for the Jones Maltzberger at Loop 410 to Ramsey to be number two on this list. And I realize that not all of these projects can be number two on the list. Uh, and so I will yield to the wishes of this committee, but I invite everyone in this room and everyone watching the live stream, everyone who's going to watch this later to contact your state representative and insist that the McCullough Street Bridge not be removed until Jones Maltzberger is given a traffic light entrance to that neighborhood. Thank you. Joe. Uh, Joe Nixon, District 10. I did some preliminary work or in study on that Ritterman Road gives sprawl. And my suggestion before we agree to fund it, fund this study, because that there's some serious issues, uh, just spacing short of moving the railroad further south. Uh, personally, I don't see how it's gonna work, but I think it's it's worthy of the study. And the, the amount in here should be for the study, not for the con actual construction. That's fine. So it would seem to make sense at this point, we kind of get to actually waiting the, I mean, if people want to add something we yeah. can, but. Yeah, I was gonna offer that you could accept this as the list and then we could wait so that we're not moving projects around at this point. Yeah. I just have a point of clarification. Are you, uh, I don't know your name, sir. Joe, his name's Joe. Joe. Yeah. Are you suggesting that we update that amount to 1 million for? Yes. He is, he is, okay. Yeah, you know, one time it was discussed for for a million, and I think well, I'm not even sure it's going to need that much um, to make a preliminary analysis and and see if it's even feasible. But uh, I have no problem with budget for a million to study it. Sounds like we have another Is comment here. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, it's not going to get funded without a study, so that's the first step. Okay. So it looks like we have consensus on a million there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's vote on the list below the line. Any just, other question or questions? Just clarifying, we're voting on an unordered list at this time, correct? Correct. We're simply agreeing yes, to the Yes, just order. items there. Point of clarification, it's from 64 down. 63 yes, first. The, the first item 63 has been voted on. Um, request. Uh, you could read it out loud for us because some of us can't read. <laughs> sure, I'll, I'll read it. Um, so starting, um, which beyond F Streets, um, Jones Maltzberger to Redland, Redland Road to Autry Pond, 17 million. Jones Maltzberger Road, 410 to Ramsey, District 1 for 9 million. Overpass at Riddiman and Gibbs for all, for 1 million. And that's for a study, I think we should articulate. Uh, Medina Base Road, five, five Palms to Home Road, uh, 12.2 million. Calabra Road, Callahan to Alamo Downs Parkway and District 6 for 2 million. North St. Mary's, Mistletoe to East Mulberry for sidewalks at 400,000. 
and Evans Road to restore the original amount, um, an addition of 10.6 million. I have a question for clarification. So these are not prioritized in any particular order, but what criteria will be used to prioritize them? You, will it you, be based on congestion and the condition of the pavement? You, I mean, you would criteria? prioritize them. You would next. So if you vote to accept these, you would then decide which is number one, which is number two, sorry, which is number two, which is number three. You already have established what number one is. Apologize. No more questions. Okay, let's go ahead and vote on the items on this list, not counting 63. The motion passes okay. in. Okay, so now we'll entertain the priority on this list. David, go ahead. Given the remarkable public testimony for the Ritterman and Gibbs Sprawl overpass, I agree that that should be moved up in priority along with uh, jones Maltzberger Road, 410 to Ramsey, because of the quality and size of the public testimony around those projects. Okay, so what I'm hearing is um, the overpass at Ritterman and Gibbs, Gibbs Sprawl should be number two, uh, followed by jones Maltzberger. Which one? 410 to Ramsey is number three, the $9 million project. So could you reorder those, Jessica, for us? So. The rest of the list you're good with in D1, in the current order, okay? Christine has a question. Oh, I'd like to follow up my colleague with putting uh, number 69, the $400,000 small scale project up underneath um, Jones Maltzberger, 410 to Ramsey. Got it, okay. And I did have a, a of District 10 on the um, Jones Maltzberger, the other piece, the Redland Road. Was that a case of the mentioned the charter school to traffic? Is that the charter school that went Jessica. into a roadway that was not adequately sized? I mean, did they? Uh, that's that's correct. So they located somewhere where they knew that. Well, I, I don't know the background about it, but it's anchored on one end, and on the other end is the junior high, mm -hmm. and the traffic backs up completely up the road, backs over into uh, over Redland Road. Mm -hmm. It is the biggest mess you've ever seen. Which is, a, yeah, and I was reading some of the public comments that we did not hear, and I think that's one of the uh, comments that the Gibbs Sprawl. Um, I, mean, I mean, we have project. pictures that we can show mm -hmm. you if, mm -hmm. if, if we want to drag this out all yeah. night. No, 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 I just, um, the, the Gibbs Sprawl project appears to um, assist in that same mm -hmm. issue that's being brought up on schools. It, it, yeah, the... the the, the Redland uh, uh, Jones Maltzberger is the number one issue in our district. Okay. Number one by far. I just want to point out, Jessica, you need to move up North St. Mary's to under Gibbs Brawl. Uh, that's what was being asked. I just have a, a question. Um, let's say we get this all prioritized um, and you get a half million dollars, does that mean that St. Mary Street will be done even though it's lower in the list? Or does that mean a half million dollars would go to some other pool of money because we can't cover any of the the numbers too? It, it really makes sense if we have a half a million dollar and we have a project 400,000, right. even number three, it makes sense to do that project. Anyway. So it largely it depends practical. on the amount of money, right. not necessarily the order that's there. Well, I mean, order is important, but also available funding is very important too. Is a 400, half a million dollars is not going to do too much on $12 million project. But it won't go elsewhere. It'll stay it will not in, go with out, the elsewhere. streets, bridges. Okay. Correct. It, also important clarification, the first $10 million of extra funds would first go to F streets right. before. Yeah. You know, my thought is, is we're never going to agree. All of us have our different initiatives and, and what we think is important. I, my thought is, is maybe we just let the city decide of what is important. They do traffic studies. They get feedback. Otherwise, we're going to be here till midnight. I agree. So, 
I, I agree. There's scoring criteria that they use on other projects, and it's got it has the column with the scoring. So I, I agree. Let them use the scoring. So we would have vote, we already voted on the list, and then may, may I say, oh, John? Sure. Sorry. Sure. As long as we have a list, when the funding comes available, we are expecting good amount of funding from federal government. Some of these projects may be number five on the list, but meets that requirement. We are going to push that one to be number one. Every year we get money for sidewalk. Sam, North San Mary is good project we could do part of our fund budget every year. I rather to you just give us the list of the project, let us to handle it. Beyond beyond the first on the list, which yeah. was part of that motion earlier. Okay, yeah. does, does that have a motion? I, uh, I'd like to make a motion to recommend the unordered list to city staff for their allotment of of funds in line with Bob Bishop's recommendation. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, let's vote. Motion passes. Okay, uh, Mark? I move to adjourn. Uh, we, <laughs> we have the memo There's yet. one more. Um, I, we had talked about the, the beginning about uh, language in um, these projects, I will entertain any, any additional argument. recommendations that we you would like to make. Go ahead, David. We didn't do our motion. Okay, okay. District Amendment. One, uh, we'd like to make a motion that um, that we amend and standardize the language of all yeah, yeah. projects descriptions to include the following phrase: pedestrian, bike, and transit infrastructure as appropriate and in alignment with all current and future adopted transportation, bike, and transit plans. This change will free up the Public Works Department um, or other departments as appropriate to determine the most appropriate type of bike, transit, and pedestrian facility on each roadway so they are not forced to build inappropriate infrastructure or are unable to include this infrastructure altogether. For example, if there's there's uh, not enough right away. Second. I, somebody seconded. No one. Additionally, this change will not cost any additional bond funds and will serve all city council districts. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. I, oh. have, I just have one question, Rozzy. With this language, in fact, give you more flexibility with the upcoming projects, as long as funding is allowed. Okay. Any more discussion? Okay, let's vote. Okay, motion passes. I believe that's it on items uh, to be voted on. I think there's still a closing statements. Uh, we would we would like to make a motion. Go ahead. You know, it's been very difficult. We don't have enough money to do our streets. And we thought symbolically we'd like to have the group to uh, vote for an additional $200 million for the streets, split $20 million for each district. It's symbolic, but I think we need to, to send that message to city council. Let, let me just add, and you know, being that, that you've, you've said that it is symbolic, I think that could be better done in just a... a Mo or a, a recommendation, uh, a motion at this point. I think, you know, I partly want to congratulate all of you. I thank you. You've met your charge at this point. Uh, anything, anything other than that, I think would be best left on it. On a, that way, you're not diluting any of the recommendations that you're making in a separate document. Yeah, I'm gonna rock the boat a little bit, and I'm probably gonna keep you here a little bit longer. So my apologies. Um, after some further discussion, and I don't know if this is appropriate, a motion to reconsider the F Street funding to what it was proposed to, to instead center line uh, miles funding per district. Well, first I want to, first we have Bob. Okay. okay. But yes, yeah, sure. I mean, that, now's the time. Point of order. Please. Uh, the person is making the motion to reconsider. How did this person vote on the F Street funding? The person who makes a motion to reconsider can only be, uh, be the person who is, who is wanting to change that person's individual vote. You don't make a motion to reconsider if you didn't get your way. It's only because you've changed your mind after I'll, voting with the majority. I'll yield to the city attorney. Yeah, I don't know that we did a roll call vote on that yeah. one. Um, I'll look back at my notes. However, let me just add that, you know, 
within the spirit of what we've done here, we've already made those, we've already taken those actions to go back and revisit those things is basically undoing what the majority of this committee has already approved. But you are also including the 10 million saving, which is going to be number one project to be distributed based on the center line, my love existing if street on each council district. But you are up, addressing I, some degree. I'm sorry, I, I wanna just keep us in order here. So we have a motion here from Mr. Bishop about, um, I guess there's this issue, like we yeah, really can't so, be in the bond language, but somehow doing a, um, is it a letter maybe we're getting at or a memo or? Okay. Yeah. Okay. A letter. And we're not changing anything that we voted on up to this point, but we need more money. It's okay. that simple. Yeah. And so we can vote it. You can turn it down. Whatever. And I think we ought to put it to a vote in the um, in our charge. It's okay to do. Yes, yeah, so you can send the letter to Eric and copy the mayor council to say you know just some additional recommendations that you may want to consider in the future, and you can add that to that. Okay. There's a motion. Do we have a second? Uh, the motion is, is we want an additional $200 million for the streets, $20 million for each district. You got it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? There's some discussion here. Clarification on could that... Is that really a letter of recommendation? If we wanted to have recommendations for process or uh for the next bond is that yeah th i mean that, that that's really the only place for that type of recommendation since that's outside the charge of this committee so th we that's wanted our to thank staff for all the great work they've done yeah and then um put, put it in, in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it, it's just, as he stated it was symbolic so you can just put like a letter to eric and copy mary council say you know we think we're going to do a lot of great work with the, with the money that we have, but but the need uh, is so great we, that we, we would yeah. you know we would like to suggest more you know more would uh, would have been appropriate something to that effect. Okay, thank you, Mark. Then let's go. Or thank you. you. This is a point of information. Isn't the total limit of the bond proposals capped by um, bond ratings? and how much the city is able to repay its bonds through revenue? Uh, do, or is there just uh, no limit as to what the bond pr proposal could be? I'll let Eric will. There, there's always a limit. And it's not by bond ratings, it's by our financial capacity with no change in the tax rate and a conservative growth in value. <laughs> Matt, go ahead. Hey there. Hopefully, I won't take too long on this one. Um, I would. I don't know if it's an amendment or if it's a separate amendment for a memo, but I would like to recommend that. And I don't think that this was a part of the F Street savings conversation that I brought up earlier. But that if council does decide to put more money towards the streets, bridges, and sidewalks when they vote to put it on the ballot that we recommend that they put it towards F Street. In particular, I would recommend saying the um, F Street allocation by percent centerline miles per council district. Well, you know, that that's kind of, you know, the, the, the project's below the line. I mean, that, that that's kind of included in there. Should council make your bucket bigger or should money come from some other different source, these projects are a priority. Okay, appreciate it. Any more discussion? Okay. Yeah, so this, if you could restate the motion, there's not clarity down here, sorry. And Marilyn, do you have a question too? Uh, if we're doing this memo, one item is the uh, what he just said at 200. I think uh, another item in this memo would be a strong recommendation that they fully fund the 20 million back into the operations, into the IMP for the F streets. I don't know if that has to be a separate motion to add, uh, to add to the memo, or I, if, we add it if, right now. If or? I might add, if you all would communicate what you want, maybe the co-chairs to write in that memo. Um, you wouldn't need to make additional motions, but you could just, they could gather your feedback and construct the memo and it could be sent. So point of information, are we voting on a memo or are we voting on proposing an extra $200 million that doesn't exist? No, you can't, you cannot create $200 million that doesn't exist. <laughs> so I didn't think you this could. This is a memo. I, <laughs> I, I, I have a yeah, question. I would, just like John suggested, <clears throat> If 
you have suggestions, maybe state them now so the co-chairs can collect them, compile it in the, in, in the memo, document what your suggestions are. They'll send them to me with copies to mayor and council, and that way the, the mayor and the council and the staff are all aware, and, and five years from now, uh, God willing, when there's a streets bond committee sitting here talking, we can pull up a memo and say, remember back then in 2021, these are the things that were talked about. Well, I was just hoping that, I, I don't know the feel, but I'm hoping that the feel of the committee, and if not, then I'll withdraw it, but the feel of the committee is that we ought to recommend to the council that they add back in the 20 million in the uh, IMP for uh, the street, F streets. Whatever mechanism, it, it, whatever mechanism is appropriate, yes. Does the committee agree? I mean, is that with keeping the the bond money and adding the IMP money back? Right, because the bond money, the hundred million, only covers fifty miles, and there's four hundred miles left. So I think that we all agree we need more F Street money, and I think taking adding it back into the budget down line, in addition to the bond money, is what we want to tell them. We need this F Street money put it back in on, it's already in there for one year. So put it back in there for the out, out years, even though it, the two year time to make the street is a cumbersome for Rosie's group. I think I would still encourage you to have that yeah. $20 million each year for F street. And, and, and we'll just reiterate that that's ultimately a council decision and takes into consideration our entire street maintenance uh, program to include the B's, the C's, and the D's that Rosie mentioned earlier. But if you want to make a suggestion that the council consider that $20 million in the operating fund and continue to do fund uh, F streets, then you can make that suggestion to the committee, but to the, to the mayor and the council and myself. Just recognize that at the end of the day, the mayor and the council as a group, they'll, they'll probably sit in a room like this when they do their goals and objectives work session for budget in May or June. They'll really set that framework um, from a, from a uh, from a group standpoint, may David, may I ask a point of clarification? Can is it possible for like the chairs to write a letter saying here are the recommendations from the committee, and then you can send your recommendation and you just say this is the recommendation from the person? Like, does it have to be a memo we all agree upon, or can it just be that you all write a memo and say here are the recommendations that we leave, and then to but, your point, that would, in five years we say here's what people from that committee said, and it's assigned to you. I, I don't want to personally vote on something that yeah. just yep. is like a wholesale letter, but if you have something that you really care about. I would suggest um, yeah, editing my committee is pretty miserable. We can all, all agree on that. Um, so <laughs> I, I would suggest that, just, just as you said, David, like we can help draft this memo, and then we would send it out to people. To yep. Would they actually sign on to it, are you suggesting? Or? No, I, I'm simply suggesting that they can submit something they said, to you yeah, okay. by a deadline yeah. and yep. it's included yep. as a part of a broader letter, but just on their behalf. I don't want yeah. to speak. I, I don't want somebody speaking for me. Yeah, like, yeah. with the motions, yeah. Was that okay? Okay, well then, if you have any recommendations for the memo, just send it over to John and I and we will. And why don't we do that by close of business Friday? Is that enough time? Okay. Okay. I, I think you just do that. Yeah. You don't need to vote. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The recommendations will say the gentlewoman from this district, not the committee, correct? Because I, I heard, I don't want people speaking for myself. So the recommendation will be the gentlewoman from this district, but not the committee itself. Eric, what do you suggest? I, I think that's correct. I think you, you highlight that the District 10 representative talked about the 200 million, District 9 talked about the F Streets. That, that way they're, they're, uh, they're not general statements that are assumed to have been um, consented on by the entire group. And if, I mean, just the same, we could talk to the council people that appointed us with these suggestions as well, right? Yeah, okay. So, absolutely. <laughs>Eddie, you had a question. You have a question? Yeah, I'd still like to make that motion to reconsider the F Street funding as currently motioned before to center line miles. Yeah, I think there was a point of order raised. If you could just establish how you voted since we did not do a roll call vote. I don't.
Did you support the motion? That's the question, right? That's what's being raised. Or did you vote against the, the F Street allocation as approved? That's the question. You both voted no. Okay, I think that's that was the question that was being asked. Okay. Again, I'm, I'm, let me restate, even though, you know, whether whether uh, Robert's rules suggest this or that, I'm the chair of the committee and, and may consider this as well. You've already completed the charge that the council has, has put forward to you. You voted. Uh, we counted the votes. Uh, you know, at this point, I think you've met your charge. I'll, I'll leave it to the chair to, to consider. But our recommendation would be that that would more look like a paint on the process than to, you know, move forward. Point of order. Yeah. Um, when you make a motion to reconsider, it means that you voted with the majority and now you want to change the way you voted but you've already established that you did not vote with the majority, so you are not eligible to make a motion to reconsider under Robert's rules. Can city staff confirm that? Yeah, Ray, we need your opinion. Uh, so, uh, Mark, can you ask your question again? Uh, uh, yes, what I said is, if you lost a vote, if unless you voted with the majority and want to change your vote, you're not able to make a motion to reconsider under Robert's rules. So that's correct under Robert's rules. Additionally, let me tell you that it is highly um, out of character for committees to revisit items like that. So then based on that, his motion would be denied. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, it's not accepted. Under Robert's rules, um, you know, again, I'll, I'll look to the committee chairs, but my recommendation would be the strong, me the stronger message that was sent by the committee was on the vote, yeah, which passed. Can he can clearly. he enter a motion to suspend the rules for that motion? I, I would not recommend yeah, that we no. make those. But is again, that like I'm saying, we've established a very good process here. I, un I understand what you're We're saying. We're starting to unravel it, I think yeah. the he, work that we've, that we've if, but completed. If he, but if he wants to do that, is that an option? If it's not, then it's not. But I don't yeah. know, Mark. No, I, I, would not, I would not allow that. I think it's at the chair's discretion, and I think that the motion is denied. Okay. Sir? Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. I also just want to quickly, since they had to stay later, I just want to thank the people who were doing the tech work and the people serving our food tonight for all the work that they did. In addition to... In addition to city staff as well, obviously, but just want to make sure those people get thanked. Okay. Oh. And the city staff, of course, for all the amazing work. <laughs> it wasn't in lieu of them, but I just wanted to make sure those people got thanked. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Green. Okay. We appreciate all, all the work adjourned. and all the time. Thank you very much. Second one down. Second one down.